Let us remain standing just a moment while we bow our heads for prayer. Our gracious Lord, we are indeed grateful today for this privilege that we have of assembling ourselves together upon the earth before the coming of the Lord. May we examine our hearts today by thy word and see if we are in the faith that we might be ready that the hour of his appearing, that we should be, as the scripture has said would be, caught up together with those who are asleep and meet the Lord in the air and forever be with him. We thank Thee for the true Christian spirit that's still in the world among the people, that they still believe Thee in Thy Word. So we ask Your blessings upon us today that You'll shower out to each one of us that which we have need of, that we might be watered by the Word, that we might grow into instruments of use in thy hands for this last day. We believe. For we ask this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our great shepherd, that we are looking to appear. Amen. 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 Be seated. And I want to say that I deem this a grand privilege this morning of being here again and sorry that we don't have the adequate seating room. And... Uh, we are going to try tonight now to have prayer for the sick. Uh, today, this morning, it would be a little hard, and, and I was going to tape this message today. Uh, the Lord seemed to deal with me concerning it all a month or two ago, and it's uh, long, and I don't have the time out in the meetings because we allow that to 30, 40 minutes of service, and then we, uh, uh, because of the people having to go to work and things, I found it better if I make my messages short. And uh, they didn't have time out there to record it, so I thought I'd just wait till I got to the tabernacle here Amen. and then record it from here. And it's a little lengthy, and I know you're standing, and I, I'm going to hurry just as fast as I can, and uh, you won't bother me if you're switching seats or whatever more. That'll That'll be perfectly all right with me because this is a special day that we just make these recordings. And um, so we got great reports from the, what the Lord has done out in the field, but we'll probably give more of that tonight when we can give more time to it, have more time to give. And now we trust that the Lord will bless each one of you. I know your hearts are full of joy looking for the coming of the Lord. And mine also bubbling over to see things happening the way they are. And, and national strife and the church in the condition it's in. And see the signs of His coming Amen. both physically Amen. and spiritually. And knowing that this time of His appearing is so close. It just fills our heart with joy Hallelujah. to Hallelujah. know that we're Amen. going to be changed one of these days. Amen. We're going to be changed from these creatures that we are. Now, I believe, if I understand, they got a telephone uh, hookup somewhere that this message is going into Phoenix and to, uh, and to different parts by uh, telephone. And so now we trust that if that's so, I don't know, I just told that before coming in and, and all the people out there are really enjoying good health and, and the glory of the Lord upon them. Amen. And now... Now, we're going to open the Word of the Lord. Amen. And what we're all here for Amen. is to enjoy ourselves and to take heed to what we are. We're, we never come here and we're, uh, no one that's present knows that any man was set in this heat like this uh, just to the idea of being here. Amen. We are here for one purpose. And that's closer walk with God. Amen. That's Amen. all we can do is to believe the Lord Jesus is Amen. with us and we're here to, to walk closer with Him. Amen. Now, this heat's a little hard on me. I kind of got customized to that dry heat out there in Tucson, which is uh, the humidity here. Now, our heat there is much hotter than this, but uh, it's uh, dry. Our humidity sometimes is one-twentieth of one percent, maybe, something like that, just almost like living under an oxygen tent. But um, here it's got the 
the, the moisture in it, and it makes you just kind of uh, feel all wrung out, as we used to call it. So it's uh, hard on you. So I know that. And you mothers with the little babies and you uh, people standing old and young and placed together like you are. And now we're, we're hoping that God will reward you richly for your sacrifice. I understand that Brother Roy Borders is here somewhere. I heard him announce, but I guess maybe he couldn't get in. All right. That's the manager of the meetings. <laughs> so uh, now we are also want to announce that one that used to be among us uh, went to be with the Lord this morning, a man, Brother Jackson from Sturgis, Michigan. No one knows how he went or what about it. He was just doing fine, and it just I think they found him dead or something. I, I didn't get the full detail of it. And we are very grateful to God that Brother Jackson was a Christian. I haven't seen him for several years, but he's set among us, and he's one of us. Yes, God amen. rest his gallant soul. Yes, Going like that, we believe that maybe that it was something that it was time for him to go. The Lord never warned us of it or him of it. He just went. That was the way it was. And I want to call his wife just as soon as I can and tell her our sorrow. And we all want to give thanks to God for his gallant Christian life and what he meant here on earth. And especially to us here in this local assembly. Now, tonight I announced there will be prayer for the sick tonight. And I'll speak more about on the sick tonight. But for this time, let's get straight into the word now because it's uh, congested and hot. We will get right straight to the word. I want to read from two portions of scripture this morning. Lengthy so that it will give me a little um, uh, background on what I want to say. And now, I uh, wish that they would hold the tape, Brother Sothman and them, before selling it, if possible. And I, I'd like to listen to it before, we, before it goes out to the public. Now, in, I want to read from Philippians, the second chapter, 1 to 8, and 2 Corinthians 3, beginning with 6, and reading into the uh, fourth chapter of 2 Corinthians, just for a background. Now, in Philippians 2nd uh, chapter, I will read first. Before reading, let's pray. Lord Jesus, Thy Word is truth. Amen. And in this troublesome hour that we're living, nation against nation, pestilence, earthquakes in many places, man's heart's failing, fear, we see the handwriting on the wall. Now, that is in the natural realm that all the world should see this. But now there is a spiritual realm also. And we see the great happenings and we want to speak of them today. Amen. Bless thy word to our heart. We know that there's no man in heaven or in earth is worthy to take this book, to loose the seals or to look upon it even. But there was one appeared a slain lamb, Hallelujah. bloody, that came and took the book and was worthy and able to open it. O oh, Lamb of God, open thy word to our hearts today for comfort. We are your servants. Forgive our sins, Lord, and anything that would keep the word from going forth with great power and influence today on our lives. Take it away, Lord, any hindrance that we might have full access to all the blessings promised to us through thy word. Amen. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Philippians 2. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercy... Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same uh, love, being a one accord of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem the other better than themselves. Look not every man to his own things, but Every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which also was in Christ Jesus, 
who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputations and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man and being found in fashion of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Now, if we shall turn now over to Second Corinthians, the third chapter, we will begin with the sixth verse. And reading this uh, to the 18th and down to part of the fourth chapter. Who also has made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. But if the ministration of death written and engraved in stones was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfast behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away, how shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? For if the ministration of condemnation be glorious, much more does the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. For even that which was made glorious has no glory in this respect, by reasons of the glory that excelleth. For if that which is done away was glorious, much more hath which remaineth is glory." Seeing then that we have such a hope, we must uh, greatly plainness of speech, use great plainness of speech, and not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which was abolished. But their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil, untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their hearts. Nevertheless, when it shall be turned to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that Spirit. And were the Spirit of the Lord, there is liberty. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, as changed into the same image from glory unto glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have now the hidden things and the dishonest not walking in craftness and handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, condemning ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them which are lost. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. Amen. Now, my subject this morning, I trust that God will reveal this. And each time, if you who take the tapes and listen, and I hope and trust that, that you have had a spiritual understanding of what that God has been if trying to get over to the church without saying it right out. See, it's a um, thing sometimes we have to say things in such a way that it might thin down. It might bring some to go out, some to leave, and some to, to, to ponder over. But that's done purposely. Amen. It must be done that way. Then it might be that some would say, you mean God would purposely do a thing like that 
He certainly did. Amen. He does yet. He said one day when he had thousands around him, he said, um, uh, except you eat of the flesh of the Son of God, the Son of Man, and drink his blood, you have no life in you. What kind of a statement do you think that a medical doctor or a nurse or any fine intellectual person would think of a statement like that for a man that had a ministry like he had? Why, he would say, eat the flesh, that's cannibal. To drink human blood? It's a vampire. In other words, he wants us to be cannibals and vampires. And the whole audience walked away from him. And there was a ministerial association with him, a 70 that had been chosen. And he turned to them and he said, uh, What will you think when you see the Son of Man ascending up from where he came from? Now, he didn't explain that. He never explained how Paul did that later on. He just said it. And then when uh, this, uh, he said, what will you say to these ministers when you see the Son of Man ascending up from where he come from? No doubt that man said, now just a moment. Oh, we eat with him. We fish with him. We sleep with him. We, we know where he was born. We seen the cradle that he, he was rocked in. And, uh, how does this man, this is a hard saying. And the Bible said they didn't walk with him anymore. They left him. Then he had 12 left. He chose 12 and one of them was the devil, he said. So he turned to them. And there's no one could explain what he had just said. How are they going to eat his flesh and drink his blood? And how did he come down when he was born right here on earth? See, they couldn't understand it. And they turned to the apostles and he said, uh, do you want to go also? And that's when the Apostle Peter made that great statement. Lord, to whom would we go? See? For we are satisfied. We know surely that you and you alone have the word of life at this hour. See? And we're satisfied of that. See, they could not explain it. They, you can't explain faith. It's something that you believe. And it's so solid that there's nothing else will take its place. Amen. Therefore, they know that the word that was written for that age that they were living in, the Messiah age, that he fit that place exactly. Amen. And what could they do to go back in them cold, formal churches that they'd come out of? Said, where would we go to? See, we are fully persuaded. And you have the word of life. See? And they, they couldn't explain it, but they believed it. Amen. See, and Jesus said that to weed down his crowd. Amen. See, so he could get the group together. And out of all those people, they only have 11 of them then understood actually who he was. Amen. They know that he was God and God alone. Now, the, my subject this morning is to reveal or unveil that God. God has always, in every age, has hid behind the veil. All ages. But He's been God all the time. But He's kept Himself hid from the world. And reveals Himself to His elected like the apostles at that day. Now that was God speaking in Christ. Now man has always, it's been the nature of man, he sought to see physically that God. Amen. He's always wanted to see it. Man has made creatures that look like him. They'd think of uh, uh, the Indians worship the sun and and we find in Africa different forms of animals and so forth and up at the totem poles and Alaska and, and different farms that they think this God is in. As Paul spoke there at Athens that time on Mars Hill. And I told them that they were superstitious uh, concerning this unknown God. That they know he was there, but yet they didn't know him. And uh, so we find even back as far as Job. Job knew that there was a God. Amen. He knew it. And there's not a, a, a 
human being in their right mind, but what knows there's got to be something somewhere. Amen. And now, Job wanted to talk to him, and I want you to notice the form that God chose to talk to Job in. God was veiled when he talked to Job. He was veiled in a whirlwind. Came down in a whirlwind. You believe that God still comes in a whirlwind? Amen. Amen. There's several sitting here, a number that was with us the other day when he came in a whirlwind. Hallelujah. Told us the day before, Brother Banks Woods, then when he said, take up this rock, throw it up in the air and say, thus saith the Lord. You will see it right away. And I picked up the rock up on top of the mountain, threw it up in the air, and the course coming down, it started the whirlwind. See, the suction of it. You have to do something to cause something to follow it. Jesus took a piece of bread and broke it, then multiplied from that piece of bread. He took water, poured it into a pitcher. Elijah took salt, put it in a cruise, cut down a stick, throwed it on the water. It's something to symbolize. And Picking up this rock and throwing it into the air and coming down started the whirlwind. The next day, while there was a minister with us on a hunting trip, he was standing close and uh, he said to me, Does the Lord give visions out like this, Brother Branham? And I said, Yes, but I usually come out here to rest. And just then, the vision came. And Brother Borders, I think he's outside now, he was along. Brother Banks Woods, I think, and all oh, several was up there, eight or ten. And Brother Banks Woods watching for this right on the mountain, right across from exactly about one half mile where the seven angels appeared that are left here to go there for. Uh, come back and told the, uh, about the seven seals. Just about a half a mile from that. And then the next day when this was going on, while the... Uh, I said to brother, this brother, I said, what's your trouble? You've got an allergy in your eye. The doctors has tried for a couple of years to stop it, and they can't do it. They say, you're going to, it's going to eat your eye out. And I said, but don't worry. The Lord Jesus has honored your faith. And he just dropped his gun. And I said, your mother, this, what she was and what was wrong with her. And he said, that's the truth. Brother Roy Roberson from the church here, standing present, I guess all of you know him, <clears throat> Knowing he was a veteran and knowing what was going to take place, I put my hand on his shoulder. I said, Brother Roberson, be careful. Watch. Something's fixing to happen. I walked back to where I was supposed to be standing, and out of the air came a whirlwind down to a canyon from above that was so great till it tore rocks eight or ten inches through out of the top of the mountain and threw them 200 yards out in and clapped three times like that, and a voice came from it. And all of them standing there. Brother Banks, present now, came up and said, that was what you told me yesterday. I said, yes, sir, that's it. He said, now, what did it say? I said, now, that's just for me to know, Brother Banks. See, because it was it would alarm people, but it went ahead. It happened just a little traveling northward. A little few days later, it hit in the ocean, and you see what happened around Fairbanks. It was a judgment sign. Now, <clears throat> we find that, that God still, uh, you see, throw people into panics. And so then they had, that had to happen, see. It just has to happen. The things that's got to happen, got to happen anyhow. Amen. See, it's going to happen anyhow. Amen. Moses one time desired to see God. And God told him to stand on the rock. And on the rock, Moses stood and he seen God pass by. And his back looked like the back of a man. God was in a whirlwind. God, while Moses standing on the rock, I guess you all see the picture out there the other day, we stood by that same rock, and here's that light, the angel of the Lord, right there where Clap standing, right on the bulletin board there now again. Notice, Jehovah of the Old Testament is Jesus of the New Testament. Amen. See, he's the same God, just changed in his form. Now, someone said the other day, a, a Baptist minister out in Tucson, how can you say that uh, Jesus and God would be the same person? I said, well, it's very easy if you just let your own thinking get away and think the Bible terms of it. 
They are the self-same being. God is the spirit. Jesus is the body that he was veiled in. See? I said, like in my home, to my wife, I am her husband. And I have a young daughter, Rebecca. I am her father. And I have a grandson. And his name is Paul. I am his grandfather. I am husband, father, and grandfather. And my wife has no claims on me as father or grandfather. She has claims on me alone as husband. And my daughter has no claims on me as husband or grandfather. She is my child. See? But yet all these three persons is the same person. Amen. Okay? That's God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. It's just the dispensation claims. God is saying the same God. God changed himself. Changes his form. If you notice here in Philippians, he said, not thinking it a uh, robbery, but took the form of man. Now, the Greek word there for that form, I've been looking at it all day yesterday, trying to think out what it was. I find come with this word of amorphia. It's spelled E-N-M-O-R-P-H-E. Looking in the Greek to find out what amorphia was, I may pronounce that wrong, but the reason I spell it, whether the tape is released, the people, will, scholars will know what I, I mean by it. He, uh, when the immorphia, that means that he changed himself. He, he come down. Now, the Greek word there means that something that could not be seen, yet it's there. And then it's changed and the eye can catch it. See, like Elijah was a dolphin. See, the, the servant couldn't see all those angels around there. And God just changed, not brought the angels down, but he changed the seeing of the servant. And there was the mountains full of angels and fire and horses of fire, chariots of fire all around his prophet. See, he changed the seeing. The, the thing is already there. Amen. So that what I'm trying to say that God that always was Amen. is here. Amen. The only thing he done when he become man, he changed his mask. Hallelujah. See, he, he this uh, in mafia, he, he changed himself to what he was to what he is or his mask, uh, another act like in a great drama. Uh, as I was uh, speaking this morning, kind of catching up on this of Shakespeare. It's been a long time, <laughs> but when Shakespeare wrote the the, the drama the uh, for King James of England, when he uh, the character of Macbeth, see Shakespeare did not believe in witches, but uh, uh, in the play for the king did believe in witches, so he had to include witches. See, and now in order to do this, they changed the cast. Becky here uh, and Carmen, they acted that in the, in the school where she just graduated a few weeks ago. Now, maybe one person played three or four parts. In order to do that, he, he changed his mask. Sometimes he comes out, he's this character. And the next time he comes out, he's another character. But it is the same person Amen. all the time. And that's God. Amen. He changed himself from, from a pillar of fire to become a man. Amen. Then changed himself from that back into spirit again. Amen. That he might dwell in man. Amen. God acting in man what he really was. Jesus Christ was God acting in man, in a man, in a man. That's what he was. He changed from the pillar of fire, and then it come in which was a veil in the wilderness that hid God from Israel. Moses seen the shape of his body, but really he was hid all the time behind this pillar of fire, which was the Logos. 
that went from God. Now, we find here, now, since Pentecost, God is not acting uh, in man, or act, and now He's acting through man. Amen. See? He was acting in a man then, Jesus. Now He's acting through man that He has chosen for this purpose. God in the form of man, uh, He changed Himself from the form of, of, a, of God to a form of man. He came in three names, three sons' names. He came in the son, name of the Son of, of Man, the Son of David, and the Son of God. Three sons' names. Now, He came first in the Son of, da- uh, son of Man because He was a prophet. Now, Jehovah Himself called Ezekiel and the prophets Son of Man. What seest thou? Jesus never referred to Himself as Son of God. He referred to Himself as Son of Man. Because the the Scriptures cannot be broken. There can be nothing broken in the Scriptures. Every word must be so. That's the way that I believe it. That's the way it's got to be. Not because I believe it, because it's the Word of God. Now, if you notice, in the beginning, one word. Page 1 in the Bible. In Genesis 1, we find out that the whole, all the sickness, all the sorrow, all the heartaches and everything that's ever happened to human beings came because one person disbelieved one word. Caused all this. That's the first of the Bible. In the last of the Bible, Revelation 22 The same God said, Whosoever shall take one word out of this or add one word to it. See, it must be word by word. Just the way it is. So therefore, and just take the little thing like I'm going someone always going over to you about the women uh, bobbing their hair. Now to me, as long as she does that, I don't care how saintly she does and how much she knows, she's still wrong. Amen. She wears shorts and these clothes like that. I don't care what she does, how much she can sing, how well she can preach, whatever she could do, what kind of a life she lives, it's still that one word's broke. Amen. Hmm? See, it's got to be every word. Not a sentence, a word. Amen. One word. So the Bible is no private interpretation. It must be Word by word, the way it's written. We must believe that and not only believe it, but live it. If we don't live it, then we don't believe it. We just say we do. Like, uh, basing back to what I said, those disciples could not explain it, but they believed it anyhow. And they made their confession and lived to it. When all the rest of them walked away from it, they stayed with it. They believed it. That's the way we do. That's where you got to do it. Amen. No matter what anybody else does, we believe it and then we act upon it. Amen. If you don't do it, then you don't believe it. Uh, notice, now as he came, he had to come as son of man because the Holy Scripture said that he would, God would raise up a prophet to him. So he could not come calling himself the son of God because it wasn't that dispensation. He was the Son of Man prophesying to fulfill and revealing to them all the things that had been done in type what He was. Then He was on earth as Son of Man. Look at that seraphy open woman run to Him and said, Thou Son of David, have mercy on me. He never as much as raised His head. She had no claims on Him as Son of David. She was a Gentile. No more than my daughter has claims on me as husband or my wife as daughter. Yet she is my daughter and my wife. She's my daughter in the gospel. But earthly, she has no rights to call me a, a father. See, now notice, this Gentile woman had no claims on him as son of David. But blind Barnabas did. See, he was a Jew. Now, he came... As son of man. 
You just have to know these words and these things. Look at Hattie Wright that time when the third pull, you remembered. Amen. Of all the everything, that woman said the right thing. You've got to say that right word. The right thing to God. Notice. Now, he came first as a prophet. And they crucified him. His own crucified him. He came as the Son of Man. Then after the Holy Spirit came, He was then the Son of God. God is a Spirit. He was the Holy Spirit, Son of God. He lived through the church ages as Son of God. Now, in the millennium, He'll be Son of David, sitting upon the throne of His father, David. He is the Son of David now. And remember, between... The Son of God and the Lady of Sea Church Age, they put him out. And in Luke, he said he would be revealed again as Son of Man. Amen. The prophet fulfilling the rest of it. See? The scriptures tie perfectly together. Son of Man. Son of God. Son of David. What was it? It's the same God all the time. Just changing his form. <clears throat> In Martha, he just changed it. It's a great drama to him. He's acting it out. He came as son of man, the prophet. Done exactly. Even that little woman in all of her sin there at the well, she recognized him. She said, we know the Messiah's coming, which is called the Christ. That's what he'll do. See? She recognized it because she was a predestinated seed. Then she, where the rest of them didn't recognize it, they had nothing to recognize with. They were in sin to begin with. For, for his acts, he changes his form. Then he came the form of son of man for the reformer's age. Wesley, Luther, and all down through the... And then we find out that they got it so bundled up, just like the Israelites did. So when he does appear in the last days in the Pentecostal age as the Holy Spirit, they rejected it. Amen. They did the same thing Israel did. Amen. And what does he do now? Return us, son of man. Amen. And then from that, son of David. Hallelujah. See how close we are? Hallelujah. Son of man. Son of David. Son of God. He's revealed in the last days as son of man. According to Malachi 4, all the rest of prophecies pertaining to this hour. No more dealing with the church after he's, they put him out. On the outside, knocking at the door. Some predestinated seed in there yet. He must get to them. God and man had emptied himself. Joel 2, 28, we find out. He said, I will pour out in the last days my spirit. Now, if you notice uh, the word there, Greek word, I may have this wrong, but the one I can find, you have to watch the words. The English sometimes means double meanings. Just like the word, we say God. God created the heavens and earth, Genesis 1. But now, in the Bible it said, In the beginning, Elohim. Now, Elohim, the English calls God. But it really wasn't Elohim. Anything could be God, the, the word God. You can make an idol of God. You can make that piano a God. You can make anything a God. But it isn't so in the word Elohim. It means a self-existing one. Amen. See? That piano cannot be self-existent. Nothing else can be self-existent. So the word Elohim means he that always existed. Amen. God can mean anything. See the difference in the word? Now, when it said here that he emptied himself or poured out, now we think like this, that he vomited up. The English word of emptied or poured out from him. See, something went out of him that was different from him. But the word kenosis in the Greek does not mean that he vomited up or some, his arm went off or his eye went out. Another person. That is, he changed himself. He poured himself into, amen, into another mask, into another form, not 
another person went out of him called the Holy Spirit, but it was he himself. Amen. Amen. You get it? Amen. He himself poured himself into the people. Amen. Christ in you. How beautiful, how wonderful to think God pouring himself into the human being, into the believer. Pour out. It was a part of his drama to do so. God, all the fullness, all the Godhead bodily was in this person, Jesus Christ. He was God and God alone. Not a third person or a second person or a first person, but the person. God, veiled in human flesh. 1 Timothy three sixteen. without controversy. Great is the mystery of God. For G-O-D, Elohim, capital G-O-D, in the Bible, referred back, anybody it refers to, in the original it said Elohim. In the beginning, Elohim. See? And Elohim, without controversy, great is the mystery of Elohim. For Elohim was made flesh. And we handled him. Amen. Elohim. Veiled in human flesh. The great Jehovah. That covered all space, time, and everywhere. Was made man. We handled him. Elohim. In the beginning, Elohim. And Elohim was made flesh. Dwelt among us. What? This is his way, the parts of a drama. That's the way he is to act it out. His way of revealing himself to us as some different person. We are mortal, and he knows that. And we only understand his mortals. We only know his mortals. We only know as our senses will let us know. And the rest of it we have to believe by faith. We have to say there is a God. Whether we see Him or not, we believe it anyhow. Amen. See? Whether there is or not, we still believe it. Yes. Because uh, God said so. Like Abraham could not see that son. No signs. No pregnancy of, of Sarah. No even any administration periods or anything. But yet God said so. Amen. All hopes even hit. Her womb was dead and his life in him was gone. And uh, the stream of his life had dried up in her her life had dried up within her, and yet he staggered not at the promise of God to unbelief, but was strong, giving praise, knowing that God was able to perform anything he said he would do. Amen. That's why we got to believe that word today. How's it going to be? I don't know. God said it's going to be that way, and that settles it. Amen. Who is this great unseen person? Who is this that Abraham seen visions? Right at last, oh, he was manifested in flesh. Before the sun came, God Himself came to Abraham in the form of a man. Amen. At the end time. Manifest. He saw Him in a little light one time. He saw Him in visions. He heard His voice. Many revelations. But just before the promised sun, He saw Him in the form of a man and talked to Him and fed Him meat and drink. Amen. Notice, God Himself Veiled in human flesh. This was a part of his way. This is the way he manifests himself uh, to us. Manifest is the eternal word, God, Jehovah, made flesh. Like in St. John 1, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the well, in the beginning was Elohim. And Elohim was, became the word. And the word was Elohim. And the word was made Elohim. <laughs> See, it's the same thing as unfolding, like the attribute. See, it is in God. An attribute is your thought. God, in the beginning, the eternal, He wasn't even a God. He was the eternal. He wasn't even God. God's an object of worship or something. See, so He wasn't even that. He was Elohim, the eternal. But in Him was thoughts. He wanted to become material. And what did He do? Then... He spoke a word, and the word was materialized. That's the whole picture from Genesis to Revelation. There's nothing wrong. It's Elohim materializing. 
so he can be touched, feel, and in the millennium, there's Elohim sitting on the throne. <laughs> That's right, with all of his subjects around him. And he predestinated before the foundation of the world, like a man building chimes or making chimes the motor. Each bell's got to ring different from the other. The same materials, but so much iron, so much uh, steel, so much brass to make it give the ting. That's the way God did. He bred this one to that one to this one to that one to this one to that one to he got exactly what he wanted. Amen. That's how he come down. God unveiled himself in a pillar of fire down through the prophets and into the Son of God, which he was God. Amen. The same God bringing out exactly from perfection to perfection, Amen. from glory unto glory. That's the way the church goes. Notice, through the ages, the same way by his prophets, he has revealed himself. That wasn't exactly prophets. They were gods. He said so. Yeah, For what they spoke was God's word. They were the flesh that God was veiled in. Yeah. They were gods. Jesus said himself, said, if, how can you condemn me when I say I'm the son of God in your own law? Says to them who the word of the Lord came to was gods. Yeah. Okay. So it was God formed and a man called a prophet. See? And the word of the Lord came to this man. So it wasn't the prophet. The prophet was the veil, but the word was God. Amen. The man's word won't act like that. Amen. See what I mean? Amen. It cannot act in that manner. But potentially it was God. See, he was the word of God in the form of a man. Amen. Called a man. Notice, he never changed his nature, only his form. Hebrews 13, 8 said he's the same yesterday day and forever. So he did not change his nature when he come. He is always that prophet. All down through the age. Same thing. The Word. The Word, the Word, the Word. See? He cannot change his nature, but he changed his form. Hebrews 13, 8 said he's the same yesterday and forever. He's changed his mask. Like I change from husband when my child is born, then I'm father. When my grandchild is born, I'm grandfather. See? But I don't change. That's still, still me. See? And that's God. It's just to change my... See? It's just change your form. See? Now it is. And nature changes it down from a young man to a middle aged to an old man. And there you are. See? You just change your form. Now, you couldn't say a little fellow stood up here 16 years old say he was grandfather. It couldn't be. His form has to be changed. A few years changes it. Then he becomes grandpa. See what I mean? But it's the same person all the time. The same person. God all the time. In this way, He reveals Himself to His people in doing this. Notice, through the age of the pillar of fire, He revealed Himself to His people. In the age of, of Jesus, He revealed Himself to His people. In the age of the Holy Spirit, as Son of God, Son of David, He always reveals Himself in that manner to His people, making the people to know Him. He's veiled behind something. Notice, in the same way, our same nature every time. God veiled in Jesus to do the work of redemption at the cross. God could not die as a spirit. He's eternal. But he had to put on a mask and act the part of death. He did die. But he couldn't do it in his God form. He had to do it in son form. As son of man on earth. See, he had to be son form. Then when he returned on Pentecost, he was son of God again. See what I mean? Get the idea? He, was, he had to come into human flesh to, and no body, no sexual desire because that proves again our statement of the serpent seed. See? Sexual. Absolutely sex. Not apples. Sex. That's right. That had to be. Notice here. See, for any good man, look at those prophets back there. But he had to be more than a prophet. See, in order to do that, he had to come virgin birth. Showing that virgin birth proved he had to be born virgin birth to take the curse off. The antidote. See what I mean? So it had to be sex. He proved it in his own coming. He come not in sexual desire, but through virgin birth. And he changed his mass from Jehovah to Jesus in order to take the redemptive work in the drama that he's acting out in God at the cross. The Greeks wanted to see him in St. John 12, 20. Many of you heard me preach on that, saying, Sirs, we would see Jesus. Amen. Did you notice that? Now, the Greeks were scholars. They were a great man. And they had a, they had a, a great feeling for God, as Paul preached to them on Myers Hill. And they, were, they, they, led, they led the world in science and, 
and uh, an education. They were great people, but they worshipped and believed in uh, mythology and so books of art, curious arts and so forth. But they, they got stirred up about this man who could heal the sick and could foretell things that happened to the dark. And they got stirred up, so they come to see him. Now watch close now. Don't miss this. And they come and they said to Philip, which was a Bethesda, uh, Sir, we would see Jesus. And Philip and another disciple brought him to Jesus, to see Jesus. Now notice, the very words that Jesus reported back to him. For they come to see who he was, and they could not see him. They seen the form, but he was in his temple. Amen. God was in his temple, Amen. veiled in human flesh. Amen. Notice the words he said, except the corn or wheat falls into the ground. <laughs> See? And dies. It abides alone. See? The hour has come. It will soon be that the Son of Man will be glorified. Amen. See? And he must pass from this earth. And except this hour comes, you'll never be able to see it. See? Here, why couldn't they see Jesus? He was masked. God was masked. The Greeks wanted a God. And here he was. But they couldn't see him because of the veil. That's the same thing today. They can't see him because of the veil. It's over their face. These Greeks were masked. Or Jesus was masked to these Greeks. Notice. He said to them, uh, except this corn of wheat falls into the ground, it abides alone. They, they couldn't understand how, why, that they couldn't see him. There stood a man. They come to see God and they seen a man. See? They couldn't see God because God was veiled to them. Amen. Now keep that on your mind. God was veiled in a man. They could say no man could do these works except it be God. Amen. No man could do it. And how here stands a man. And yet the works of God is manifested through him. Amen. See, they couldn't understand that God was veiled. Amen. He's veiled in a man. As he always was veiled. Hallelujah. But he was veiled unto them. He was in his human temple. God was in a human temple. Amen. Be real careful. Now he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Amen. God veiled, hiding himself from the world, veiled in human beings. See? Here was God, those Greeks said, we would see him. Jesus said, a corn of wheat has to fall and die. You have to die to all your ideas. You have to get out of your own thoughts. Like those disciples once, they couldn't explain about eating his body and, and drinking his blood. But see, they died to those things. They were dead to a principle. They were dead to Christ. No matter what it is, how much defeat looked like yet, they still believed it anyhow. See? They could see in that man, a man that eat, drank, fish, slept, everything else, was born here on the earth and walked with them, talked with them, wore clothes like the rest of them, but that was God. Amen. So the Greeks couldn't see him because he was hid from them in a human being. Notice. His word to them, except this corn of wheat falls in the ground, God veiled in the form of a man, hid himself from their view. They could only see a man. But those predestinated seen God. Amen. One saw a man, the other saw God. Amen. And it was God veiled in a human being, making both of them right. But your faith in that, what you don't see. You believe it anyhow. God failed in a human being. He was in that flesh, and that flesh was his veil. The veil was rent, see, that God might be made manifest. In the Old Testament, God was hid when he was on his mercy seat, on the mercy seat by a veil. In the Old Testament, God was in his temple, but the people come in and worship like this, but remember, there was a veil. Amen. Amen. That hid God. They know God was there. They couldn't see Him. That pillar of fire never appeared anymore there. Did you notice? 
There's not one time in the Scripture from the time that pillar of fire went in behind that veil that it ever showed again to come from Jesus Christ. God was veiled. When he stood on earth, he said, I come from God and I go to God. Then Paul, at his death, burial, and resurrection, on his road to Damascus, there was that pillar of fire again. Amen. What was it? Out from behind the veil. Amen. Glory to God. He was in behind the veil. Amen. Now, he is behind what? Skin veil. Hey? Badger skin. Behind the veil. And when that veil was rent on the day of crucifixion, the veil that he was wrapped in was rent on the day of the crucifixion, the whole mercy seat came into view. Now, the Jews could not understand how that God could have uh, uh, mercy upon a sinful, foul people like we are, but they couldn't see this one who was given mercy because he was hid. He was behind the mercy seat. On the inside, with badger skins hanging down, covering him. Before, it, 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 before, if any man walked in behind that veil, it was sudden death. Amen. Amen. Oh, we're going to get a lesson here in a minute. You can, you can receive it. To walk behind them skins, even one of the priest's sons tried to do it one time and died. Don't go behind that veil. The man that walked behind, why there's no redemption yet in that is potentially. It's just potential. And anything potential is not the real thing yet. Hey, just potentially. It was redemption. Sin was covered, not omitted, remitted rather. Not remitted. Remitted is divorced and put away. And so the blood of sheep and goats could not do that. So Jehovah was hid behind a veil. Now, back behind this veil where he was hid to enter into that, a man dropped dead to try to enter into it. But since Pentecost, since the crucifixion, when that veil was rent from the top to the bottom for that generation, Jesus was that God veiled. And when he died at Calvary, God sent fire and lightning and rip that veil from top to the bottom. Amen. That the whole mercy seat was in plain view. Amen. But they were too blind to see it. Amen. As Moses said, you're all, uh, Paul said reading of Moses, when Moses is read, yet that veil is still on their heart. Oh, brother, sister. That's what the Jews did when the veil was rent and brought God into plain view. Hanging on the cross. Amen. He was in plain view, but they couldn't see it. Could it be possible that the Gentiles have hit the same thing? Oh, God. When they've had the church ages of the Son of God. But when now the veil of this denominations and things, this veil of tradition that we've got since Pentecost, when the church traditions has been rent, the things that the people said, the days of miracles is past and these things, and God has took the veil off of it. Amen. And brought it in plain view. And they're ready to crucify it again. Just exactly like that. The unveiled God. Plain view. They should have seen him standing there. Yet he was too common. He was an ordinary man. They couldn't see it. See, there stood a man. Well, they said, this guy, what school did he come from? But remember, when that spear struck his body... That spirit left him. The temple of sacrifice uh, blocks turned over. And the lightning went down to the temple and rent the veil. Uh, what was it? There was her God hail on Calvary. Amen. And they were too blind to see it. Brought him in open view. And still they don't see it. They're blind. God veiled in a human being. Remember he returned then? To Paul after that, and to Peter in the prison as a pillar of fire. Remember that? But in the last days, he's supposed to return again. But a pillar of fire is supposed to come back again to manifest the Son of Man. 
to show the Word, the light. Yeah. The traditions has been will be wiped away. There's nothing going to bother it. It's going to be done anyhow. Amen. God just tear them denominations and traditions down. What kind of spirit will He do with it? Like He did in the first place. Look what He done in the days of Elijah and the days of John. Don't you think to say it in yourself... You have Abraham to the Father because God's able these stones to rise short of Abraham. Don't you think because I belong to this and I belong to that? See? God tearing off the veil. See, to show who He is. See? Watch the veil when it rents here now. We find out. Now, in one time if a man walked through that veil, it was sudden death. Now it's death not to go through it. Amen. Amen. If you can't break that veil of tradition. Break through that wall of denomination to see God in His power. It's death. Once where it was death to go in, now it's death to stay out. The whole mercy seat set in plain view. Anybody can see it. The veil's rent. Glory to God. The whole mercy seat comes into plain view. How God could have mercy on foul sinners as us when He hid Himself was a mystery and now it's in plain view or in full view revealed by His Word. It's always the Word constantly that is God. It's the Word that opens it up. If those people to know the Word of God that day when Jesus died, they'd have seen the mercy seat. They would have seen who He was. Who was that then? Why did the veil rent? Remember, it's death to go into and nobody could see it. Moses saw it in a farm. It was a, whirl, uh, it was a, a man's back. Well, here it is, a bleeding back. That same man. What was it? God wanted to show him the mercy seat. God wanted to show him who he was. So the veil in the temple from the hand of God above was rent from top to the bottom and showed God in plain view. It was Jesus Christ hanging on the cross, the mercy seat. And what was it? The people were too blind to see it. Now it's repeated again. The traditions. How then on the day of Pentecost the word came and was in a form of Son of God and they began to organize it at Nicaea, Rome and the first thing he went to Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Pentecostals and so forth. It's organized tradition to a man don't know where he stands. Amen. But glory to God he promised in the last days what he would do. He would show His Word in plain view, open before us again. Open it up. If they had only known the Word, they'd have known who Jesus was. If a man only knew the Word of God, he'd know the hour we're living and what's going on. They just refused to listen to that Word. Their traditions. What caused those Jews to see that? What it looked like they could have actually seen because the thing was tore open. It was tore open for a purpose. What's this revival long for now? How could it prosper? How could it be blessed? I don't care how many impersonations it's got or anything else. That all, when Moses went out there, there's a mixed multitude went with him. Amen. But what's it done for? It's Jehovah Himself Amen. taking the veil off of God. Amen. To show the difference between right and wrong. Which is Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, or who's right? God's Word is right. Amen. Let every man's word be a lie and mind the truth. God needs no interpreter. He does his own interpretation. He manifests it and it gives the interpretation. God unveiling himself. Oh my. Right in the midst of us. We see his great hand telling these things. He said, got something on that tonight. See, of how to watch the hand of God. What it does. How it unfolds itself. See, and people say, oh, that's nonsense. That's fanaticism. There's nothing to that. That's nonsense. That's Beelzebub. That's a devil. That's fortune telling. That's this. See, the same thing they said about him. Amen. Oh, church, and if this tape goes out, can't you see ministers of the gospel where you're living? Can't you see the hour that we're in? God showing himself, setting aside. Look, he took that temple veil and tore it to pieces. That they might see God in plain view. Amen. And they was too blind to see it. And he's done the same thing today. Yeah. Putting his word right out in front. What he promised. Ever promised in the word laying right before us. In plain view. You know what the Gentile church does? The same thing the Jewish church did. 
too blind to see it. And so it'll be on their hearts just as it was in that day. Notice, this, to stay away from it now, you must go into it through this veil or you won't. How God could have mercy on them. But remember what it was. That God is manifesting what was behind that veil. Watch what was behind the veil. The Word. Amen. What did it veil? The Word. Amen. What was it? It's in the ark. Amen. It was the Word that that veil hid. Amen. And Jesus was that Word. Amen. And He is that Word. Amen. And the veil of His flesh hid it. And today the veil of tradition hides the word again, saying it's not so, but it is so. God's testifying of it, blasting Himself right out as bright as the sun before everyone. And they fail to see it. God would be merciful to us. And tight, Moses coming from the presence of God with the word of God for that age. Now watch, we're now in Exodus 19. Don't miss this now. Exodus 19. Moses is coming from the presence of God. Or 20 and 21. 19, 20 and 21. Moses is coming from the presence of God. He has been into the Word. The Word's been wrote. And he in the presence of God with the Word. He had the Word for that age. There's a Word for each age. And Moses coming forth. His face shines so. See, the Word was in him, ready to be manifested, give out to the people. The true Word. God had wrote it. And it was with Moses. Notice, it was with Moses. And was ready to be manifested. He was the Word to them. He was the living Word. He had Veiled himself. Moses had to put a veil over his own face. Why? He was that word. Amen. Amen. Until that word was made known, Moses had to veil himself. Amen. Amen. Do you see it? Wherever the word is, it's veiled. Moses had the word. Now remember, after the word was made manifest, Moses was Moses again. Amen. See? But while that word was in him to be given out, he was God. Amen. Well, he wasn't Moses no more. He had the word of the Lord for that age. Amen. Nothing could touch him till that was over. Amen. He had that word with him. Amen. So therefore, when he come, the people turned their heads. They couldn't understand. They'd been changed. He was a different fellow. He come with that word and he put a veil, the Bible said, over his face. For he had the word and he was the word to them. Now look, if Moses, oh brother, here's going to be an insult. But if Moses, as Paul said here in 2 Corinthians, the third chapter. If Moses had to veil his face with that type of glory up on him. See, because that was natural glory. That was a natural law. And if Moses, knowing that that law had to perish, but the glory was so great that it blinded the people so they had to put a veil over his face, how much more will it be? Yes. Spiritual blinded people. Yes. That glory was to fade away. But this glory won't fade away. Amen. See? Moses had the carnal laws, the condemnation, no grace, no nothing. It just condemned you. But this we're speaking about, that had no pardon. That just told you what you was. This gives you a way out. And when that word is unveiled, oh my, what kind of a face will it be? It'll have to be veiled. It's got to be veiled. Now notice so the Spirit is veiled in a human temple. See, He to speak the natural words with a natural veil. Now, Paul's speaking here now. And in this, this sense, the Spirit word, we are ministers not of the letter, the law, but able ministers of the Spirit. That the Spirit takes the letter 
and manifest it. Amen. That was just law. You had to go look at it and say, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not do this, that, or the other. See? You had to look at that. But this is spirit that comes up on the promised word for this age and brings forth and manifests not two tables of stone, but the presence of the living God. Amen. Not a mythical thought somebody made up or some uh, Houdini a trick, but the very promise of God revealed and made manifest right before us. What sort of a veil will that be behind? And to, lo- to lose that, that was so great to even the people said, they said, when they seen Jehovah come down in this pillar of fire and begin to shake the earth and, and the things he done and the mountain on fire, and even if anybody tried to go to that mountain, perished. It was so great to even Moses feared the quake. Then if that time he shook just the mountain, this time he'll shake heavens and earth. Amen. What about this glory? If that was veiled by a natural veil, this is veiled by a spiritual veil. So don't try to look at the natural. Break into the spirit and see where you're at. See what hour we're living in. Does it make sense to you? It's a spiritual veil that's over the people saying, I'm Methodist, I'm as good as anybody. I'm Baptist, I'm Pentecostal. Don't you realize if that thing is a traditional veil? It's hiding God from you. That's the things that keeps you from enjoying. Oh, oh, you say, I shout and jump up and down. He said every word. Eve believed every word but one. See? It's the full word of God, the promise of this hour made manifest. See? Notice now, as we go on, got plenty t- I'm here to speak of, but i got about 20 pages but it, of, of notes. But I, I just want to speak on them all. See? I'll hurry. Uh, he is veiled with a natural veil before he could speak the word to the people. Now, God has to veil himself as he promised in human flesh. God, do you get it? Amen. God has to veil himself in human flesh and put a spiritual veil over him. Say, well, I'm this and I'm that in order to speak to the people. When that veil, which is the traditional veil, is tore apart, then the, that, what they say, well, the days of miracles is past. A guy said to me the other day, a, a little Baptist preacher out there come to me, Brother Green, and he said, Brother Branham, here's one thing I got against you. He said, you're trying to make the people, it's down to the Ramada Inn when we had the meeting there, said, you're trying to make the people believe in an apostolic age to live today like they were in the apostolic age. said, the apostolic age ceased with the apostles. I said, it did? Yeah. I said, who was the spokesman of the apostolic age? He said, the twelve apostles in the upper room. I said, then Paul was out. I said, the spokesman was Peter. And Peter said on the day of Pentecost, when they seen all this going on, and the Holy Ghost were, he said, the promise is unto you and to your children. And to them it's far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall ever call. If he's still calling, then the same thing is here. When did the apostolic age cease then? The apostolic age ceases when God ceases to call. Amen. Never said a thing, but picked up his hat and walked away. It takes the word to do it. It's the word. Jesus told Satan, it's written. That's it. It's written. I said, Peter said that it would never end. As many as the Lord called, this blessing was for him. Now you say he stopped. When? No harm done. I said, no, sir. Not a thing. Wait. Let's see. Peter said that it was for everyone God would call for would receive the same apostolic blessing. That's, that's the word of the law. See? Now, the natural veil. God the word veiled in human flesh. What was it? God was veiled in Moses. God was in Moses, veiled, and the presence of God was in him. He was so perfect with that word in him like that, he had to veil his face. And it was a vindicated prophet that unfolded the word and told him, Thou shalt not, thou shalt, thou shalt not. See? To give his word to that generation, he veiled himself in a human being, or the word would have blinded even the called out. See? Even the people that was out there, they could not stand to see that. In Exodus, we find that. They said, let Moses speak, not God. 
See why the pillar of fire don't appear too much? Amen. See? God said, I, I, I'll do that. I'll raise him up a prophet. Amen. Amen. I'll raise him up one. And he came. Amen. Said Amen. Him. I'll raise, and he'll have be the word. He said, if they want to see what the word is, said, now Moses, I appeared to you on a burning bush, said, I'm going to come down and set that mountain afire. Said, they'll see that you've told the truth. I'll appear here in a, in a, the same burning way. I'll appear here and prove to the people I'll vindicate your ministry. Amen. That's what he told Moses here. So many words. Notice, he said, now, I'm going, to, I'm going to glorify you before the people. He said, now, you told them, and I met you out there in a burning bush, and I'm going to come down. <laughs> Same fire. Now, I'm going to let the people see that you never lied about it. Amen. You scientifically prove it, even if you want to, you see. I'm going to come right down and let them know. And when he began to thunder, when Jehovah started thundering, the people said, no, 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 don't let Jehovah speak. We'll, we'll die. Amen. See, he had to be veiled. So God veiled himself in Moses and gave Moses the word. And Moses come down and spoke the word of the Lord in a veil over his face. Is that right? Amen. Jehovah veiled in the form of a prophet. Because it would have absolutely... And God said he wouldn't speak to them anymore like that. He would only speak to them by a prophet. Amen. That's the only way he'd ever speak from then on. That's the only way he's ever spoke. Amen. That's right. Yeah. Never any other way. You don't lie. Notice... Only Moses had the word. Now, there wasn't a, a group came down. There wasn't just the Pharisees or the Sadducees or it wasn't a, a certain sect or a clan. It was Moses. Amen. He got one man. He can't get two or three different minds. Amen. He takes one man. Moses had the word. Amen. And Moses alone. Amen. Joshua even didn't have it. Amen. No one else had it. Amen. Amen. Joshua was a, a general. Joshua was a commander of the army. Joshua was a believer, a Christian. But Moses was a prophet. Amen. The word can't come to Joshua. It's got to come to Moses. Amen. He was a major prophet of the hour. Amen. Notice. Amen. The word never did come to Joshua until Moses was gone. Amen. No, sir. God deals with one at a time. Amen. God is one. Amen. Now, only Moses had the word, not a group. Look, God warned any persons not to try to follow Moses into that veil. Amen. Impersonators. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Woman, man, priest, whoever it was. Amen. How godly, how, may, how much honor, how much they was. He warned. Amen. Let Moses come along. Amen. If any man, even an animal touches it, must be killed right there. Yes. Never break before that veil. That veil belongs to one person. Amen. That message is one. Amen. In the temple, one man went in once a year, anointed and fixed, to go in, not to bring out the word, but to offer blood. Amen. They even walk in there before it. Only one. Amen. Any other man died. See? They spiritually die now. This is a spiritual veil. See, that is a natural veil. This is a spiritual veil. See? They keep walking right on in behind there. You can tell them. Oh, I know, I know that. But I said, go ahead. Right. It only speaks. Remember the last plague in Egypt was death. Before the exodus. The last plague on earth is spiritual death. Before the exodus. Amen. Then they'll be cremated and turned back to the dust and the righteous will walk out upon their ashes. Amen. But the last thing is spiritual death, rejecting the word. Amen. Now, notice, God warned any persons not to try to follow Moses into the veil of fire. Moses was to be veiled. He had to come out of there and Moses went in as Moses, went into this pillar of fire. And when he walked back out, he was veiled. For he went into that, out of his traditions, the traditions of the elders. He saw the pillar of fire, but now he goes into the pillar of fire. <laughs> Amen. And he come forth veiled. God's word in a man veiled. Here he come walking out, oh my. I can see it. Warn nobody else to try it. Nobody to impersonate that. Better not. 
even a priest or a holy man, whoever it was, cardinal, bishop, anything else, tried to go in that veil, died. God warned them. We'll have no impersonations. Amen. His word is revealed to one. It's always been. A prophet came with the word of the Lord each age, every time, down through the Scripture. Amen. The word comes to one. In every age the same, even in the church ages, from the very first to the last, others had their places. That's right. Amen. Notice. But stay away from that pillar of fire. See? What a lesson we learn here. See? Everybody wanted to be a Moses and everybody... You remember what Dathan and them said out there? They said, now, Moses, wait, you're just a minute. You take too much upon yourself. See? Now, these other men here that God has called, that is true. They, each one were following fine as long as he went along. But when one tried to step up and take God's position that he gave Moses, which was predestinated and ordained to that job, tried to take it, fire come down and open up the earth and swallow him right into it. Yeah. 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 Be careful. Just be a good, God, a godly Christian, believe in the word. See, Stay away from that pillar. What a lesson. God had... First appeared to Moses in a burning bush. God was veiled in the pillar of fire. Now listen real close now for a minute. God first come to Moses. He was veiled. God was in a pillar of fire. Hid back in a bush. See, like behind the skins. See, back by the mercy seat. At the altar. See, he was veiled. He's always veiled. And when he come to Moses, he was in a pillar of fire. Veiled in the pillar of fire. But here before the people, God vindicated him by the same pillar of fire. See, Moses said, now watch, are you reading? Are you letting your minds drift way out? Can you, can, if he has got ears, let him hear. Amen. When God appeared to Moses, it was in a pillar of fire. When he called him to his ministry. And Moses, uh, uh, come and told the people about it. They couldn't believe it. Yet he'd done the miracles and things. But this time, he visibly, scientifically appeared and vindicated Moses' ministry to be the same God that spoke to him because he appeared in the form of the pillar of fire and set the mountain on fire. And he come to Moses in a bush, spoke to him. All right. God's first appearing to Moses in a burning bush veil. Before the people, God bailed again and vindicated Moses by the veil, by bailing himself with the same fire. Same pillar of fire came down. From, from thence, from them, so they could only hear God's word. You get it? Just the word. They heard his voice. For Moses was to them the living word. Moses, see, God had so proven that word by Moses. See, Moses said, God said to Moses, go down there, I'll be with you. He's not nothing going to stand before you. I am that I am. Moses come down and said, you might not believe this maybe, but God appeared to me in a pillar of fire. And he told me these things. Oh, we have all kind of things like going on. Pharaoh said, why, Pastor Pharaoh said, well, you've got a cheap magician trick. Well, i got magicians here who can turn a serpent into a, sta- a stick into a serpent. Come here. Uh, magicians and they come over there and done the same thing Moses no no nothing bothered him how many impersonators they had that make a bit of difference Moses just stood still Amen. the first thing you know they crawled around a while directly Moses snake just eat the rest of them up Amen. why like them apostles they couldn't explain it Moses didn't know how God was going to do it but he was going to do it Amen. remember he said Jambres and Jambres will return in the last days Amen. see impersonations and would deceive the very elect if possible. Matthew 24, 24. See? Just exactly the same things. Do the same kind of miracles and everything. Watch that word. Watch that word. And the man says he does a miracle and still wants to be his three gods. And he's all these kind of, you get away from that. Amen. We know that's, that's wrong. No such thing. The, the word, every word. Every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Genesis, one word over here said, don't take or add one word. It's got to be that same word. See? Notice, the people seen something that had happened. Moses had been veiled 
as a, he was a prophet, and God had vindicated his word now. Went down there, and he seen signs and wonders. And then all right, this people got separated into themselves, a church. See? Church means called out. See? After this, called out of the world and became a people. See? Then God let himself be known, and he was that pillar of fire. He proved Moses' message. See? He was a pillar of fire. They might have took the picture of it, I guess, if it had cameras, because <laughs> it was all on fire. Amen. But they, they proved that God proving it, that the message is right. Amen. The message was at hand. Everything was this going to be Exodus then. Amen. Bailed his prophet to this Exodus people. The people think, seeing something had happened to him, he was now different from the rest of the Israelites. He was a different. His message is different. He was different from the priest. He was different from anything. See? He was a different person. The people seen something happen. God had veiled himself in his prophet to speak his words to them. That's what he had done. Moses was that living word to the people veiled by the pillar of fire. Speaking what was to be veiled later behind badger skins. See, the word had to come from Moses first. See, Moses had the word. They were written by God. Nobody could interpret them. Moses had to interpret them first. That's when he veiled his face. Because he, do you see it? Amen. See? Amen. Here it is. Amen. We can pick it, pack it up, and everything else that, but it's got to be revealed. Amen. And in order to reveal, Moses had to become God Amen. to the people. Amen. You say that's nonsense. Why well, he told, even told Moses himself, "You'll be God, and Aaron will be your prophet." Amen. Amen. No, there he comes, see? Yeah. He had to veil himself because God's always Amen. behind the veil. Amen. Oh, my! Do you see it? God's hid from the public. Amen. Amen. I said, Father, I thank you. You've hid it from the wise and prudent Amen. and reveal it to babes. Oh, Lamb, it wants to learn, see? God Amen. hid behind the veil. Moses veiled his face. Moses was the living word veil then. The people saw that pillar of fire and said, now we're satisfied, see? Let Moses speak. See, don't let God speak lest we die. Moses walked right into that pillar of fire. See? And said, now, he said, now, I, I won't speak to him no more like this. I'll give him a prophet. See? That's what he always did. See? He said, now, let them go. But this prophet has to have this word. Amen. If he's veiled with the tradition, God never sent him. Amen. If he's veiled with the word, God will vindicate it. Amen. God interprets his own word. Moses spoke him. God interpreted him. Amen. Moses said the Lord said so. The Lord did just what he said. That made it right. Now he said, now Moses, you understand, the people understand now. See, I have showed you, I have vindicated you. God had veiled himself in this prophet to speak his word to the people. Moses was the living God to them. The living word of God made manifest. That's the reason his face is veiled. See? And do you know the same thing in a genuine Christian is veiled today to unbelievers? They see them women with the long hair and things like this. Well, look at that old model. Yeah. Women twist their hair up on the back and say, got a flat tire. Yeah. Spare tire. Pack. See? It's all veiled. <laughs> They're blind. Yeah. Oh, they say, I got a PhD. I don't care what you got. You're still yeah. ignorant of the word. Yeah. Exactly right. All of that, that's just something minor. Huh? Take the small lessons first. How about the people who say... That they are veiled in the presence of God and preach some church tradition. Amen. Oh, mercy, good and switch. Adds to and takes from and everything Amen. else. Injecting their own subjects and their own thoughts Amen. and not the Word of God. See? Hallelujah. What kind of a veil? That's got an ecclesiastical veil. Amen. Yes. God tore that veil wide open. Amen. They said there is no such a thing as prophets. There is no such a thing in these last days as apostles and prophets. There is no such a thing as divine healing. There is no such a thing as seers anymore. There is no such a thing as Mark 16 being fulfilled. Apostolic age is done. They veiled it from the people, but yeah. God walked right out with His Holy Spirit of fire and rent that thing from the top of the bottom. God has rent the veil. Moses was the veil, the living Word of God, veiled behind human flesh. The pillar of fire was in Moses, of course. Speaking. 
what was to be veiled later behind skins. You see, now that the word, the word was brought forth, then it was written out, then it was put behind and still veiled. For God was always in that word. Amen. He's the word. Always. He was in that word. That's the reason that word had to be veiled. Oh, brother, sister, are you catching it? Look, don't you see? It's been veiled through these ages according to what God said. And it will be opened in the last days. Those seven seals will be broke. Amen. And the full thing would come into view of the people. Amen. What's took place all along? Amen. That hour of the seventh angel's message. All the mysteries of God should be made known. Amen. This last hour. How the Christ is put out of his church as son of God. How has revealed his son of man again. How that the church is to be put in order. And everything for the last day. No creed, no denomination, just absolutely the word living in the individual. Amen. I'll take one and leave one. I'll take this and leave that one. See? It's, it's, there's no strings, no denominations, no bindings, or nothing. It's a heart with God and Him alone. See? Notice, veiled in the human flesh, Moses with that word, speaking, was to be later put behind badger skin. So, the, so is Christ our Moses. Christ is our Moses. He was God veiled in human flesh. Veiled in humanity and flesh. That's right. And he's the same yesterday, Amen. today, Amen. and forever. Amen. He was veiled with badger skins. He was veiled. And this time he is veiled in a man. Amen. Okay. Now notice. Same yesterday, today, and forever. Promise word to this age. He's still Christ, the promise word to this age, veiled in human flesh. Amen. The Word is God. The anointing is a person. The word Christ means an anointed one. Amen. See? The anointed one. Then Moses was Christ in his days. He was the anointed one. Jeremiah was Christ in his days with a portion of the Word for that day. But when Jesus came, He came as the Redeemer anointed one. And that was both Moses and all that was in Moses and all the Word and all the Godhead bodily was in Him. Amen. That's the reason the whole temple veil and the mercy seat come in perfect view. Hallelujah. He was the anointed one. Amen. Notice, now the veil in human flesh, the promised Word to this age must also be veiled. Amen. Notice, sin-loving church members and sinners cannot see it because of the human veil. That's the reason they couldn't see him. Why, well, he's a man. Where did he come from? What fellowship card does he have? What church does he belong to? I want to speak on that tonight. What church does he belong to? <laughs> and so on. Uh, um, now, what church does he belong to? What, what group, what school did he have? Where did he get his education? Well, this man was born according to the tradition, according to the, the legend of him around here. This man was born out of holy wedlock. Why, he's sure he's of the devil. See? He's, he's of the devil. He was born out of holy wedlock. And Joseph, this murderer, keep her from being stoned because she's an adulteress. And that man come around and tell us priests what to do. And there was God standing there revealing that word, crying, My God, why hast thou forsaken me? The very songs they were singing in the temple of David had made for him years ago pertaining to Christ. All my bones, they stare at me. They pierce my hands and my feet. And there they were standing there singing that in the very man dying on the cross. Amen. And when they got through and the, when he died, the God of heaven come down like he did on Mount Sinai with holy fire and burnt that temple a veil from top to bottom tore it apart. And what could they do? Look right there out of the temple window on Calvary and there was God in plain view. The sacrifice. But they don't see it yet today. God in this last day has rent those traditions away and brought the word for this age right plain in view. And they still don't know it. They just don't know it. It's, it's so simple. It's just so simple. And so far away from the things of the world. I preached the other day at a certain gathering of being a nut. <laughs> One of these days, I want to speak on that. Being a nut. <laughs> We're all nuts for somebody. So, <laughs> so I'll be one for Christ. Amen. Paul said Amen. he was counted a fool. Sure. You have to be... See, it takes a nut to hold the things together. Amen. That's right. Amen. So, Glory. notice Hallelujah. the veil, the human flesh. 
No, now, the sin-loving people could not see that. Those traditional religious people, they couldn't see that because he was a man. Why? That human flesh hid God. Amen. Now, if it had been a great pillar of fire that come down, see, a great pillar of fire had come down and showed them that what he was, that he was this great pillar of fire, they might have believed that. If Jehovah would have run around, but you see what he did so that he could bypass all them smart, wise people. He just revealed himself like he promised Moses. See? I'll speak to him through a prophet. And he was a son of man. A prophet. And some of them recognized it. About 100% of 100 in the world, they believed it. The rest of them didn't. But he was just the same. But there was a mighty God standing in full view. The mercy seat. He died when his own children, saying, his own children there, saying, we won't have him. Away with him. Spit on him. A type way back when David was leaving the temple, rejected king, went out through the street, and a little old crippled up fellow crawled along, never did like him, called him old hypocrite or something, spit right in his face. And that guard pulled the sword and said, I'll let that dog's head stay on him, spit on my king. David said, let him alone. God told him that. David probably didn't know what he said. Went up on the mountain looking back crying. 800 years from there, the son of David was climbing the same mountain. Looking out, weeping over Jerusalem, a rejected king, and they spit in his face. Amen. Don't you see? It's the same thing. See that word coming on down? Amen. Falling on down today, always rejected by the majority. <laughs> Believed in the minority. Now, see, they couldn't believe it. Those Greeks, they couldn't see him. He is in his human temple. Well, he said, this man's name is Jesus. He comes from Nazareth. Now, they only had one name there in them days, like John, Jim. They say, John from Jeffersonville, Jim from New Albany, or something like that, you see. He said, this is Jesus from Nazareth. Amen. It's common belief that his mother was pregnant by a soldier, see. And then, that's exactly what they believed. That's sure. And say so they said, now, and this is Jesus of Nazareth. You see, who is he? See, they couldn't understand that, but why this word for that day when he was preaching that search the scriptures? In them you think you have eternal life, and they testify who I am. Amen. If you can't believe me, if you forget me as a veil, believe the word is coming forth. Amen. Two is a witness, he said. I speak and the Father speaks for me. <laughs> That's right. I speak of the word of this day and the Father confirms it. Now, is that a witness to you? <laughs> Uh, it is, see? That's why it's to be fulfilled. Notice in 2 Corinthians now, the, uh, 2 Corinthians, 3rd chapter, 6th verse, the old temple housed God behind old skins from the Jews. When the old veil was rent, still the Jews blinded to who he was and who he is yet. And then Pentecost revealed who the true and living God was when that veil was cut in two with God from the top. Why did that veil do that? Why did it do it? Why did there come such a message today to do what it's done? Why did it come? Why is someone going to call me someday here and I'll go want to debate with me about the, the church age that God was in his holy church and things like that. And I found out some woman preacher and I just forgot about it. See, if it had been some man that was going to be all right, it had been different. But so, but uh, what she used to go and plumb over into another country there when I got to leave a meeting here to do it, you see. So I just let them alone. The blind leads the blind. They, they all fall in a ditch. So don't. So, now, in this age, when the old denominational and traditional veil has been rent from the Word of God, so it can be manifested. You see what I mean? The tradition says all those things are past. Let's soak a little bit. The things are past. But in this last day, that traditional veil has been rent apart. Amen. Amen. Here stands the pillar of fire. Amen. Here he is manifesting the word for this day. Amen. The veil's rent. Now, it's the world, still they don't believe it. No matter what, they don't see it. They don't see it. It wasn't sent to them. Remember, the Son of God was not revealed to Sodom. Two messengers was. That's right. But the God Himself in human flesh was revealed to Abraham, the elected. Amen. And watch what He done to reveal Himself. And now Abraham knew, when he knew what was in Sarah's thought behind him, he said, Call him Elohim, thy servant. <laughs> Notice. Now, so 
It can be manifested. The words had a veil over all these years to the people. It can't be done. You remember the sermon I preached the morning when I left here the first time about Goliath and David? I said, look at the challenger out there. Seeing that the days of miracles has passed. Watch them tapes as they come down. Watch each one has come in more plainer and plainer. If you have ears to hear. See, eyes to see. What? I said, there stands that great ecclesiastical world out there saying this scientific age that it cannot be done. But I said, God, in that light, for it was ever taken but once. Now, it was taken then. It's down the river there. They never took a picture of it. I said, he told me that it would be done. He would make a call and he'd sweep the nations. Amen. And even the Dr. Davis said, you with a grammar school education passed into seventh grade will be praying for kings and monarchs and will start a revival that will sweep the nation. I said, that's what he said. Amen. And it's been done. Amen. And it's been done. Amen. That's the thing of it is, you don't need no interpretation. He's done it. Amen. He's already done it. That interprets Amen. itself. Amen. Calling his elected from, from all walks of life. Now, it's made manifest. It, I said that David stood out there a little bitty scrawny fellow with his back all bowed in, a slingshot in his hand. And while Saul looked at him, the head of the ministerial association said, why, you, you're not even trained. He said, let me see if I give you a Ph.D. or something. Put this uh, armor on him. He found out I didn't fit a man of God. He said, take the thing off of him. He said, I don't know anything about that. So let me go in the way that I know what I fought the lion with, what I fought the bear with. He was kind of a woodsman. He said, let me go in this way. And this old guy said, you send a dog out to fight me. said, I'll pick you on the end of my spear and hang your carcass up there and let the birds eat it. David said, you meet me as a Philistine in an armor and a spear. And I'll meet you in the name of the Lord God of Israel. What's the prophet David said? Today I'll cut your head from your shoulder. He you know what he, whom he had believed and was fully persuaded is able to keep that which he committed to him. Thing. So it happened anyhow. The old saying, the days of miracles is past, the walls is tore down. Amen. Jehovah Amen. still stands in full view, manifesting his word, unveiled one. That's right. Notice, the Danchow church has also been blinded from the veil after it's been tore off and showed God the ecclesiastical veil. How? By veiling the word in human beings. That's exactly what Israel failed to see. If it would have been some angel or something, Israel would have believed it. But being, it could not be an angel. It had to be a man. Amen. Amen. God can't break his word. Amen. In the last days, it has to be the same thing again. Amen. Amen. What blinded Israel? That man. You're a man making yourself God. Amen. That's what they killed him for. And today, because the message comes to man and not angels, uh, see, God can't change His way, Amen. change His word. He said He changed not. See? Notice, promise, and the Gentiles are just as blinded today as Israel was because what? The veil. Amen. God veiled in a human being, Amen. blinded Israel. Amen. Notice, as ever blinded one, one. It will blind the other. It will reveal the truth. Amen. It'll close the eyes of some and open the eyes of the other. Amen. Look, Jesus stood and said, well, Your name is as, as, um, Simon. And your father's name was Jonas. He said, Lord God. Amen. Philip, he said, well, How did you know? He said, Behold an Israelite in whom there is no guile. And he said, Rabbi, when did you know me? He said, before Philip called you, when you were under the tree, I saw you. He said, Rabbi, you're the son of God. Amen. You're the king of Israel. Well, there stood those there said, he's Beelzebub. See? What did he do? Open one's eyes, blind to the other. Amen. What did the priest say? Well, that guy is Beelzebub. The little woman said, I know Messiah's coming, which is called the anointed one. See? The anointed one will come. We haven't had prophets. You must be a prophet. But the anointed one will come. We're looking for him. This is the last day for the Gentiles, for the Jews. said, this is the last day. See, both Samaritan and Jew were looking for a Messiah. He said, this is the time for him to appear. We know when he comes, he'll do these things. He'll tell us these things. Jesus said, I'm he. Amen. Her eyes was open. The police, priest was blinded. That's what the gospel always does. It opens the eyes of some, reveals the truth to some, while it blinds the others. 
has a twofold meaning. Some can take that sun, look straight into it, and go blind. Others can take it and walk out with it. It's a different. As it was done in every age, deity veiled in human flesh. Notice, he did. The prophets was deity veiled. This is the word of God. Is that right? Veiled in human flesh. So they didn't notice our Moses neither. See, Jesus. Notice, veiled behind the old badger skins in the old temple was the word. Was the word manifested on tables of stone. Now, I'm going to try to get that weight in about 20 minutes now if I can. Make it half past 11. Notice, if you notice, I've turned some pages here. See, to keep them getting, so I keep them cutting, making it too long. I know you're hot, tired. Behind the old temple, in the veil, what was back behind there? What was Jehovah? What was hid back there? What was the veil hiding? <laughs> Hallelujah. What was the veil hiding? It was hiding the Word. The veil, old badger skins, was a hidden, hiding the Word to their eyes natural. Behind there also was the shoe bread. Behind there also was the Shekinah glory. But it's all hid from them. It's all hid. All the glory of God was right behind that old badger skin. That's right. All hid to the natural eye. It is today too. It's called a bunch of holy rollers. Fanatics. But they don't know what's hid behind there. That's what they don't know. See? Then when God in mercy rent the veil for them to see, they were so wrapped up in their traditions, they, it was still hid to them even to this day. Same now. The glory, the power of the Holy Spirit, the Shekinah glory that comes upon the believer, I mean the real believer, that causes the works of God and the faith to come into him to believe the Word of God, that's all hid to them eyes. They say them things are past. You see, they're still living behind the veil. You're not behind that veil anymore, little ones. God's coming full view of you. The other day, Brother Fred Stockman. Brother Tom Simpson, I don't know where he ever got you or not, several of us, was up at a Baptist church. And the minister said something that sounded pretty good. All of us said, Amen. Everybody in the church stretched up her neck and looked back. See? See? We found a crumb that come from behind the Shekinah there, you know. And we're kind of glad to get it. We said, in other words, thank you, Lord. See? And when they did, these fellows were so veiled, they just laughed at it. They didn't know what it was all about. See, they're still veiled. So there's some inside and some outside. So, but God's in full view of us, hid. Same now. Amen. Then when God in His mercy rent the veil, He was brought into plain view. But they were so wrapped in their traditions, He was still hid from them. Same now. All that glory hid is hid for us in Christ the Word, who is our temple. Amen. Oh, now, I'm going to have to dig down in this a little bit. Excuse me for my emotions this morning. But, oh, I've, I've wanted to give this out so long. It's just binding up in me. See? Notice. All the glory that is in God is in the Word. All the blessings that's in God is in the Word. It's hid to the unbeliever by traditions. See what I mean? But it's all in Christ. All that God was, He emptied Himself. Kenosis. And it came into Christ. And we into Christ <laughs> are behind the veil. Or well, I'm into Christ, you say, and then believe there's three gods. Amen. Baptized in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Believe in all these traditions and things that you believe in of the elders? No, you're still behind the veil. Amen. Okay? Come into the veil. He, Christ, is the Word. I, I don't believe in divine healing. I don't believe in these miracles and things like that. Well, you see, you're, you're not in the, inside the veil. You don't know nothing about it. See? Christ is the Word. And when we're in the Word, we're in Christ. And how can I be in Christ denying Christ? It's He that said, not one word shall be added to or taken from. How can you take from and add to then? See, it shows you what veil has got you veiled away. See? We in Him... 
then we being in him, we are still veiled to the religionists and professors of the world. See, our glory that we have and enjoy, we are still veiled to them outsiders. They think we're crazy. A nut again, see? See? That's right. But we who are in here, in Christ, baptized into him, 1 Corinthians 12, into him, we are partakers of this glory. See? But not on the outside, you're still looking in, denying it. See? So now we are invited into him to be partakers of all that he is. We're invited into him, which is hid to unbelievers by the veil of human flesh. See? They know that glory, they read of it, it's in the word here, the glory of God and things like that. It's just a word to them. To us, it's a manifestation. Amen. See? It is no more a word, it's a reality. Amen. 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 God said, let there be light. That was the word, but now there is light. Amen. Yes, it ain't amen. the word, it's the light. Amen. See what I mean? Now, it isn't just a written word to us. It's a reality. We are in Him. Now we're enjoying. Now we behold Him. Now we see Him, the Word. Manifesting Himself. It's hid out there because why? It's veiled in human flesh. See? Oh, they said that bunch of people, where did they go to school? What, what education do they have? Where, what, what did they come from? What, what, what group do they belong to? <laughs> see? They don't get it. A man said to another man, he said, you had to belong to a denomination to be a Christian. He said, I am a Christian. I don't belong to any of them. <laughs> he said, God take this cancer out of me. He said, now what do you think about that? As a doctor. He said, show me the denominations doing it. <laughs> All right. See, it's still veiled. We're inside of Christ. Now, as then... All true believers see him. The word of promise of this day openly manifested. That's a big word if you can get it, see. All true believers that's in the word see God openly, the veil's rent. And God stands openly before you and manifested. Amen. Amen. God manifests openly. In order to do this, our old denomination, traditional veil must be rent again. In order to really see what it is, you've got to come out from among that stuff. Amen. See? You'll never do it. They'll keep pulling that veil before you every time. Oh, there's nothing to that. But here it is written. And here it is made manifest. <laughs> see? Now, what if a fellow refuses to see the sun? Say, oh, there, I know God said let there be light, but there is no such a thing. I'm going down to the basement. I, I just refuse to see it. The guy's crazy. Amen. <laughs> There's something wrong with him. Amen. There's something wrong with a man or a woman can see the promise of God and see it manifested and then refuse to believe because the denomination pulls a veil down. Amen. Yeah. Veil. In order to do this, our denomination of traditional veils must be broken. By God's spirit of fire and sword, which is his word, Always his word is his sword. See, he took his sword that day full of fire and ripped that veil from top to bottom. He does the same thing with the same sword today. Amen. Not my creed, my book of creeds, my, my catechism, but the sword of the Lord. <laughs> he rips the veil down and you see God standing in plain view manifested in his word. What a glorious view to look at. Amen. All right. God's Holy Spirit in fire, His sword, rips it. The Word rips the denominational veil. Well, if you just said the Word and the Word don't work, what good would the sword be here and say it can't rip? Say, ah, and it won't rip. Amen. But when you lay that sword of God up there and watch her rip, she's, she's helped by an ordained hand <laughs> sent to do so. See, rips it open and there He is. There it shows God plainly in view. The great Jehovah. That is His Word made manifest the portion that's promised to the day. Do you get it? Amen. See, when the sword promise of the day in this day, what's supposed to be? And God takes his sword and rips down the denomination of veil and pulls it back and manifests himself and shows that he's there. Still that same pillar of fire. Amen. Notice, that is the word made manifest for today's promises. We see it as did Peter. When he said, to Lord, to whom 
would we go after seeing this? Where would we go? What church could we join when we're born in one? What could you? What denomination could you join after knowing this truth? When they ever won tonight, every one of them I haven't got a one. Say I do a thing for. That's right. I started off on these trips down here where 42 churches in one place was a sponsor. When I got there, I had none. <laughs> Every one of them said, he believes in eternal security. That let the legalists out. One of them said, he baptizes in Jesus' name. That lets all the rest of them. Amen. So one of them said, he believes in the serpent seed. The serpent has no seed. That let, the Bible said, I put him in between her seed and the serpent's seed. Amen. See, there, the, the veil's been lifted off of the word. Amen. See, that's right. It's revealed to babes. It's, it's lifted. They see it. And it will be, as once said, that's right. Then it will be, as once said, when you see, when this veil is took off of the word, the traditions is taken off the word, as Jesus once said, when you see me, you see the Father. <laughs> see? God and his word is one. Now you understand? When the word is manifested, what is it? Okay. Jesus said, search the scriptures. You think you have either. You believed in God. Believe also in me. If I do not the works of my Father, then don't believe me. Amen. But if I do do the works, I and my Father are one. Amen. When you see me, you have seen the Father. And when you see the Word made manifest, you see the Father God. Because Amen. the Word is the Father. Amen. The Word is God. Amen. And the Word made manifest is God Himself taking His own Word and manifesting it among believers. Amen. Nothing can make it live but believers. Amen. Just believers. It's not, it won't, you can take wheat and plant it in, a, in a, a different kind of a soil. It'll never grow. But what, it's got to have certain fertilizer in the ground to raise wheat. And if there is no, if, there is, if the fertilizer in the ground isn't, isn't, the wheat isn't germatized to that fertilizer, it'll never grow. So no matter where the word falls, if it doesn't fall in the right kind of a heart, Jesus said, so some fell by the wayside on stony grounds. And the fowls of the air come and fed on it. And then he said, some fell into thorns and thistles, which raised up and choked out right away. Traditions, denominations, cares of the world choked it. But said, some went over into good ground and brought forth a hundredfold. So that's the kingdom of God. It's the same thing. Some will not believe at all. Some will believe for a little while. Like the disciples, they followed him. Many of them, the 70, followed him for years to find out about a year and a half or two years just to find out that they could find something in him. Some, like some way he had some power to do these things. Or like a rabbit foot, a magician of some sort, what he could do to produce these things, how he could know what was in the people's heart and what they were thinking. And they finally found out that he said that he'd come down from heaven. He was the Word himself. Amen. And when they did that, that was too much for them. They said, no man can understand this. And they walked away from him. That's those who fell among thorns. It brings back to the same thing in every congregation. You have make-believers, unbelievers, and believers. It's been in every congregation. You find them all the time. Some of them make out like they're believers. That's the worst of time. And then they have those who are actually unbelievers. He won't bother you. He'll just walk away and shake his head. But those who make-believe, say they're believers, that's the time. That's the kind you have to watch. It's those make-believers. And then there's some genuine believers. See them three there? There was the unbelievers as soon as he said, eat the flesh of the Son of Man. Oh, man, that was it. The others was make-believers. They stayed till, just like Judas did, right up to the end. But then the real believers, they couldn't explain it, but they believed it anyhow. The veil, tradition of unbelievers, take it away, you see God. When the veil of traditions has been removed, you can see that God is still God of His Word. Amen. He still keeps His Word. Amen. He's the... He's the God author of His Word. That is hid behind skin veils to others. Yes, that is right. To those who cannot go behind the veil, He's still behind skin veils. Notice. Then we, uh, then we become part of Him as you are the veil that veils Him. You are part of Him. As long as Christ is in you. As God. Christ was of God because God was in him, made him God. And as Christ is in you, the hope of glory, you become part of Christ. 
He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he also. See? You become part of Christ. As long as Christ is hid in you, then it's veiled to the unbeliever. But you know he is in you. You're templing Christ. That's behind the veil, the skin. Then, we because of this veil, the veil, again, in human flesh, hides God, the Word, from the unbeliever. As it is written, see, written, you are written epistles, the Bible said. Amen. And what is epistle? Is a written word. Yeah. And you are the written, in other words, you read like this, it says you are written epistles, or you are the word that has been written, made manifest. Nothing can be added to it. You can't say I'm a written epistle and leaving some other kind of something with what this is already wrote because nothing can be added or taken away. As Dr. Lee Vale is writing this famous book, I want you to see it. After a while, Brother Vale shares on the ground somewhere. I see him outside. I don't think he can get in. But he's writing a book there. It's very astounding. Uh, the Lady of Sin Age. Now, I want you to be off of presses pretty soon. So uh, we're taking the last reading of it now. And was writing, was discussing it in there. See, about uh, everyone has always come to me and said, Brother Branham, them seven thunders that the voice thundered. And he said, write it not. See, but close it up. Said, that'll be seven thunders that will be revealed in the last days. See, seven thunders that'll tell us. Now, don't that sound real good? See, but watch what you're talking about when you say that. He said, see that you write it not. See, these seven thunders utter their voices. See, and he said, don't write that. See, but it's be sealed up in the book until the last days. Now, someone has been, many has been saying, and theologians said, Brother Branham, if the Lord God said, if, if with your experience that the Lord has given you for his people, humbly saying this, said you'd be eligible to write a, a Bible yourself, your word if God has manifested. I said, that might be true. See, he's trying to catch me. I said, but you see, I couldn't do that. He said, why couldn't you have all the qualifications? I said, but you look, one word cannot be added or taken away. See? And he said, well, then, them seven thunders, you see, he said, well, them seven thunders blasting out, won't that be a revelation be given to some man? I said, no, sir, it would be adding something to it or taking something from it. It's all revealed in there. And the seven seals opened up the revelation of what that was. Amen. Said, it's still in the word. You see, you can't get out of that word. It won't leave the word. And God's spirit will never leave that word. It'll stay right with the word, blinding some and open the eyes of others. Amen. It'll always do that. Ye are written epistles, read of all men. Or you are, I, uh, translate that, turn it around this way, see? Just turn it around. You are epistles that has been written. Of course, you can't add nothing to it. That's read of all men. Manifested word of God, in other words. Uh, Peter and John, to show it. When they went up there, they perceived they were ignorant and unlearned. They had no education, but they'd taken notice they'd been with Jesus. See, they were ignorant and unlearned, but they were written epistles. See? Read that they had been with Jesus, because Jesus was manifesting himself through them, Christ veiled in their flesh. Manifested. Made alive, like he was in Moses. When the Word was in Moses, he was God in flesh. When it was in Jesus, it was God in flesh. See, only thing he done was change his mass, not his Word, not his nature, He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He only changed his form. He changed from Noah to Moses. He changed from Moses to David. <laughs> from David, Joseph, on down. They come into the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Amen. See? It's still the same God. Amen. Amen. I hope that gets through. See? It is the same God. But he just takes on another veil. See? He puts on another veil. He did it in the Reformers. Taking on a veil. Taken on a veil until finally it come down through the Lutheran age, down through the other age. Then finally it comes out into the complete, just before it comes, a prophet arises again. What it does, it foreshadows the word, showing back here, revealing what's been done, what's been left off, that the church would be without, not without understanding. Then when this fades out, then like John said, I must decrease, he must increase, then all in all comes into him. He's fully manifested. Through Luther, Wesley, and Pentecostal age, and on down, on down, he's fully manifested, you see. Come down, just a manifestation, God unfolding. See, now notice, fulfilled in his promises for this day as they had. Now Moses was the word that day because the word was given to him for that day. Amen. Moses. Joseph was the word in his days, portraying Christ exactly. See, 
Each one of them was the Word. And when Jesus came, He was the Word in His fullness because the whole plan of redemption laid in Him. Amen. The whole plan of redemption didn't lay in Moses, didn't lay in Joseph, didn't lay in Elijah. See? They were only part of the Word pointing to it. See? Now notice. Keep your thought. Here it comes. <laughs> As I say. See, the whole plan wasn't in them. They were pointing to it. Therefore, after Him, the fullness, we cannot point to something else. It points back to Him. Amen. The Word. Amen. This is a complete revelation. Amen. Nothing can be added or taken away from. There's a complete revelation. All of that a shadow of Him to come. But when He come, He was a perfect. Yeah. Hebrews 1, God in Sandra time spoke to the fathers through the prophets. God spoke to veils. Amen. The prophets. Amen. But in this last days, through His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. There you are. Unveiled out there on Calvary, the Son of God. Unveiled. Notice. Made alive. And today when the Word is manifested in human vessels, veils, it's absolutely the Word fulfilled in that day, which comes back to God. Being baptized into Him, according to 1 Corinthians 12, we become identified with Him. Amen. Amen. I said a half hour, but can I have just a little bit longer? Look, I just can't miss this right in here. Notice, identified with him. Now notice, how many American citizens, if you raise up your hand? All right, you are an American citizen, then you are identified with this nation. Whatever this nation is, you must be. Is that right? You're all of her glory and you're all of her shame. You're identified with her. You are an American, so you take on America. Hallelujah. Amen. I was a George Washington when he crossed the Delaware. Amen. I'm identified with him. That's right. I was at Abraham Lincoln at the Gettysburg Address. I was standing there. I was with the soldiers on Guam. You boys, when you hoisted that flag, I was there. I'm an American. I'm identified with it. Amen. Amen. Now, to be an American, whatever her shame is in the revolutionary, I bear it. Because I'm an American. Now try it. And as a Christian, I'm identified with him. Amen. I was with Noah when he went in the ark. I was with Moses when he came out of Egypt. Amen. I was Elijah on Mount Carmel. Yes, sir. Glory to God. I was with him when he did that. I was truly with him. I identified myself in his death there on Calvary when I died to the things of the world. To myself and all traditions. I was identified with him. I was identified with him on Easter morning when he rose from the dead. I was identified with him on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost came down. I can rush mighty wind. I was identified with him. All that he was, I am. All that I am, he was. Amen. Being dead in him, we are identified with him. What he is, I am. <laughs> what this nation is, I am. I'm proud to be that. I'm ready to bear her shame. I'm ready to bear her reproach to be American. That's right. And I'm double that to Jesus Christ. All that he ever was, I am. I like to be identified with him. Them apostles, when they come back, they thought they'd made fun of him, called everything else. They thought it was a great honor to bear the reproach of his name. I'm happy today to be one of them. Being identified with the Word, which is Christ. Identified with Him. Being baptized into Him, we become identified. Identified in His likeness. Identified with His Word, which is Him. If I am in Christ, I am His Word. For He is the Word. And what He is, I am. Amen. You get it? All right. The Word manifested or revealed in that revelation in there. Then what does that put to me? If He is that Shekinah glory, I'm part of it. Amen. Amen. Oh, amen. That's right. Uh, The Word is self-revealed. Reveals itself. Think. The mysteries of God made known to us in this day by the same heavenly messenger that was made known to them in them days. Notice the same pillar of fire that sent Moses. The same pillar of fire 
that was on Moses that wrote the Bible, the same pillar of fire that Paul met on his road down to Damascus, and Paul wrote the New Testament. Remember Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? They only wrote what they seen, but Paul had the revelation. He pulled it out, or he had met the pillar of fire himself, and think the same there, Joseph, uh, all them wrote what went on. Everyone wrote back in that day. But when Moses came on the scene, he had the revelation. Amen. He had met the pillar of fire. Amen. And it was revealed to Moses how Genesis, he wrote the first four books of the Bible. Yes. Moses did. Amen. Is that right? Yes. For he met God in the form of the pillar of fire, bailed in the pillar of fire. When Paul met him on the road, the disciples just wrote what they seen him do. But Moses had the revelation, went out into Egypt for three years and studied and seen the God of the Old Testament, but Jesus of the New. Amen. The revelation, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. <laughs> That's right. Right. And think of it. The same pillar of fire that come upon those men that wrote the Bible is the same pillar of fire here today interpreting the Bible. Amen. Amen. How we thank Him for that. Same, what a comfort, what identification. I'm so glad to be identified in that. I don't know what to do. I'd rather be identified in that and all the Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, and all the rest of them. Identified in that Word where that Shekinah glory and revelation lays. The pillar of fire appearing visible in among us, identifying that the message is right. Like you did at Mount Sinai, I remember... Before the true message come forth, Moses preached. And he led him out of Egypt. But there before the real commandments was laid down, the seals was brought in. God come down before the people and proved that Moses was sent from him. Is that right? In a pillar of fire that Moses said he had seen in the bush and talked to him. Oh, in this last days... To see that same pillar of fire right among us speaking the same word. Not only that, but interpreting it by making it manifest and proving it it's the truth. So the people has not one way to disbelieve. Let's say just willfully want to. And then he that sins willfully after having a knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. Notice, same pillar of fire sent to Moses and to Paul that wrote the Bible, now sent to reveal it. The grace of God, the unchanging God, fulfilling the promises of Matthew 28. Lo, I am with you always. Fulfilling St. John 14, 12. The works that I do, you also. Fulfilling St. Luke 17, 28, 29. In the last days the Son of Man will be revealed. Amen. Amen. Malachi 4, Behold, I send to you Elijah the prophet that will restore the faith of the people back to the original word. Amen. Amen. Now this thing. Oh my! He died to reveal himself to us. Now let us die to self to reveal him to others. Amen. Let us die to the traditions and things to reveal him to others. Die to the denominations to reveal him to others. Notice the old temple had in it the Shekinah glory and the light of the Shekinah. Over the Word, the Word is the seed. It brought forth the shoe bread to believers only. The blood also was upon the covenant. And the blood is the water, the water that lifens the grain, the wheat, the seed, which is the Word. Like Jesus said, as Moses lifted up the brass serpent, and then again he said, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believed in him shall not perish. Moses smote the rock in the wilderness to save a perishing people to bring water. God smote Jesus to bring forth the Spirit out of him for a perishing people. The blood came from him, which is the water of the washing by the word, which the water brings life to the seed. And it brought forth the Shekinah glory, shined up on the word, which brought forth the shoe bread. And the shoe bread was just for a chosen people. <laughs> Is that right? Now, breaking into the veil, through the veil, into his presence, where the word is, not the creed, the word. In there, seeing the Shekinah glory, the Shekinah, 
the power, the Holy Spirit, shining upon the Word, bringing forth the promise, shows you're behind the veil. <laughs> Amen! Across the ribbon veils where the glory never fails. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm living in the presence of the King. Yes. I've crossed the rimming veils where the glory never fails. I'm living in the presence of the King. Hallelujah. The old badger skin denominations is tore down. Amen. I broke through that into the Shekinah glory. Amen. And I see the Word. I see the pillar of fire moving. I see the Word made manifest. What He said He would do in these last days, I see it growing. I see the children eating that Shekinah bread coming from the ripening of that word which believes it. Amen. What a wonderful hour we're living in. See, the Shekinah was over the word. And under there was the bread. And there was the blood sprinkle which gives it water. The Spirit gives life to the word. In the, how many heard the tape on the trial? Yes, many of you have. You see there? It takes that word must grow. In order to grow, it's got to be in the right kind of ground. See? And God makes a promise and it hits that heart. It cannot fail. Amen. No, waited 120 years. Abraham waited 25 years on the child. God said so and that settled it. Amen. See, what a, the word was there being watered by faith, believing it. It brought forth the results. It brought forth the sun. It brought forth the rain. It brought forth the flood. It brought forth the virgin that was conceived. The prophet said a virgin shall conceive. No doubt whatever little young girl went and got her baby clothes ready. Well, this prophet Isaiah was a identified prophet. Vindicated of God. And the Lord said a virgin shall conceive. I'm going to give him a supernatural sign. A great sign. A virgin shall conceive. There will have people and believers just like you all. And they heard that prophet say that. Every little girl, every man said, that's going to be my daughter. Yes, sir. Everybody went and bought the booties and the bird eye and everything getting ready. Because they know she's going to have it. That generation passed and they thought, that identified prophet. Vindicated of God. How could he tell anything was wrong? It must be so. It was 800 years later, but she brought forth the baby. <laughs> Heavens and earth will pass away, but my word shall not pass away. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God. <laughs> Here we are. The light over the word. As the light of the sun changes the seed from glory to glory, we also became come more like him as we live in his presence. Like him being conformed to his blessed image as we walk with him. Watch what the sun does. You plant a seed. What happens? That seed rots. Inside the seed is a life. The life comes forth and brings forth a stalk. Now that don't look like the first. There's Luther. It was a stalk. All right, the stalk went on. First thing you know, it brought forth a tassel. See? That was the Wesleyan revival. But like the other, then along come the Pentecostal revival. See? Brought forth the baptism of the Holy Ghost. All right. What happened? We get fungus on the ear. It begins to look wrong. This thing, that thing. It don't look like the Word. It's not like the rest of it. It's not like the original grain went in. But God is still there to make that, that just the same. Notice what does it do? It finally returns back to the original seed again. When he come in the form of Martin Luther, when he come in the form of John Wesley, when he come in the form of the Pentecostal, he's supposed to reveal himself again like the same seed went in. The Son of Man. He revealed Himself as Son of God through the stalk age and so forth. But in this last age, He's revealed Himself as Son of Man again. Get it? All right. Like the beginning. Molded and what does that stalk grow? It's growing all the time. That little stalk grows. Still, it's not like the original grain. Neither was Luther's message. No. Long come the, the other messages. Penny, Sinky, Knox, Calvin, on down. None of them. They were still the, the message. But what it was, they didn't get the complete revelation of it because it wasn't time. You can't put the ear on the corn before it's time to come. Amen. See? Then finally, there comes back again the original seed that went into the ground. Amen. See? God follows nature exactly. Amen. See? He was born to lamb. That's the reason he was born out in a manger. Lambs are not born in beds. Amen. See? He was led to the Calvary. Amen. Sheep are led. That's right. A goat lead them to the slaughter. You know that. A slaughterhouse. A goat leads them, but they have to be led. <laughs> That's right. 
So he was led to the slaughter. See, because he was a lamb, everything identified him in nature. That's the reason he was born in March or April, not in December. He couldn't be 20 foot of snow up there in that time of year. Not no sun god, but he was a son of God. <laughs> See, Roman sun god on the 25th day of December when the solar passes its uh, places in there and they had the Roman circuses and called the sun god's birthday and they make it the son of God. No, no, he was the son of God. His birthday was with the rest of nature. Exactly. Now, notice again now as we go on, we got a little time left. Now, to the perfect, after the stalk has been formed, after the tassel has been formed, after the grain has come on to the cob, then it has to come to perfection. Back to a regular grain again. And remember, the grain must be germatized. See, if it don't, it won't live. See, none of that was outside of them messages will ever come to life. It has to be germatized. To it. But remember, the same life that was in the stalk is in the grain. It's just maturing itself right back. See, he revealed himself what? Son of man. The grain that went into the ground. Get the message? The Greek said to him, we would see Jesus. He said, except the grain of corn falls into the ground. All right. Now, what did he reveal himself next? In a different form. Stalk and tassel and so forth. And all the leaves and everything. He revealed himself then what? Same spirit, but in a different form. See? But what's the last of that corn? It comes back to the original grain. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. And his ministry comes from them reformations back to the original Amen. word again. Amen. The word comes to a prophet. And he promised that in Malachi 4 and to restore the faith of the people back to the original grain. What went in the ground is here the same. The grain has come up through here. It come up as son of God. Now it reveals itself here as son of man. And then it reveals itself as son of David on the throne. See? That's three sons. Just exactly. Oh, my. <laughs> Again, like the original. Now, to the perfect ministry of himself, not some man, not some denomination, as they've worked down through that age there. See? But himself made manifest, manifest himself to the promise, making St. Luke 17, 28, Malachi 4 and so forth, Hebrews 13, 8, just exactly right. At that time, what time should it be? When the royal seed of Abraham is looking for the promised son. And all types must be fulfilled. And God himself appeared in the form of a human being. Amen. To Abraham's natural seed. Before the destruction. And Jesus said it would be the same thing to this royal seed. Before the promised son returns. Amen. Notice the old veil that hid the glory. The old badger skins, there was no beauty to be desired of it. Neither was his flesh. That's the reason people said, a little old stooped over fellow like that, probably 30 years old and gray and his beard gray, wasn't much to look at. The Bible said there's no beauty we should desire him. He didn't look like a king. The old badger skin, but oh, what was on the inside. Amen. And a little bunch of holy rollers sitting together in a hot building like this, they call them. Not much beauty to be desired, but what's on the inside? I'm sure it's veiled from many hearts, you see. You see. All right. Outwardly, it was nothing, but all was on the inside. Amen. Once the inside of it, then you see it. How do you get into it? Shaking hands? Joining? No. Born into it. Amen. Dying, getting rid of your old badger skin. Amen. See, your old self, to get into a new one. Amen. See? Forsake the old badger skin. The Shekinah light does not listen. Ministers, ministers, I want you to listen to this. When once the inside, I'm going to take this real easy so you'll be sure to get it. Once inside the veil, under the Shekinah glory, the Shekinah light does not take the Word of God and reveal Jesus to be a fortune teller. No. Like the denominations do today. Mental telepathy. Holy Roller. Beelzebub. The Shekinah glory doesn't reveal him to that. But the Shekinah glory ripens the seed that's promised for that hour Amen. of the Word. Showing Him to be still the lily of the valley. Amen. It brings forth that seed. The lily of the valley. The bread of life. The Alpha and Omega. The same yesterday, today, and forever. 
He is the believer's potion. The Shekinah glory reveals to the believer he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Not the days he's passed and he died and it's all over. So, friend, if you believe that, if you believe that, you've never struck the Shekinah glory. How could the Shekinah glory ever reveal him in three persons? How could the Shekinah glory ever reveal him as being baptized people in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost when there's never a person in the Bible baptized that way? Amen. How could the Shekinah glory limit him to an apostle when he's the same yesterday, today, and forever? Amen. See? The Shekinah glory manifests him. Hallelujah. It brings forth the word of promise right out to you. That's the reason that he had to veil Moses' face because in him was the word. Amen. He veiled Jesus as a humble little man. To keep him from seeing Jehovah. Amen. And he veils himself today in earthen vessels. Amen. But the shy Shekinah, the outside looks like a bunch of holy rollers. Old badger skins. But the inside Amen. hides the Shekinah glory. Amen. And it ripens the shoe bread that we feast on and drive across the country for hundreds of miles. Amen. It's the believer's food. Amen. It's only for believers. Amen. Remember, the shoe bread was only for the believer only. Amen. Shoe bread seed. Notice, what does it do? That Shekinah glory over the shoe bread kept it from spoiling. Remember, the manna that came from heaven. It was stayed in the Shekinah glory from one generation to another. Outside, it got wiggle tails in it overnight. Amen. It contaminated. Is that right? Amen. Outside of the Shekinah glory, the days of miracles is past. See? It's all fanaticism. But inside, look, they got some sunflower seed out of a garner in Egypt that was put in there in the days of Joseph, 4,000 years nearly ago. Joseph put them in the garner. They planted them. They lived. Why? They had life. What's this Shekinah glory today to break beyond the veil to see who God is standing before you? See who God is standing here before us? The, the, the pillar of fire. He's veiled in human flesh. But what does, this, what does it do? The shewbread seed of the Word that we're to live on in this day by these promises. The Shekinah glory ripens that shewbread. Brings it to pass. Makes it bread to the believer. That laid in the pages of the Bible... Year after year, the word for this age to the denominations, it's a stumbling block. To the denominations, they stumble at it. Down through the years, Luther, Wesley, Martin Luther, and all, Sankey, Finney, John Smith, Knox, all stumbled at it. But what's it to be done in the last days? What is to reveal? Bring forth. What's Malachi 4 to do? To turn back the people from that stumbling block. To break down the traditions and to reveal the bread with a Shekinah glory. Watch it ripen and produce just exactly what it said it would do. Oh my, the shoe bread for this age. To the denomination, a stumbling block. A bunch of fanatics. But we who believe. But now, as Revelation 10's promise, all the mysteries of God that's been hid in the pages down through them years will be ripened. Brought forth in the age of the seventh angel's message. Is that right? Amen. What did he say a year and six months ago? Right on two years now? Go out to Tucson. Be north of Tucson. A great blast. What would take place? The seals would be opened. The seals that reveal these things. Come back. Just as he said. What is it? It shows it cannot be man. It hits perfectly, just as straight as it can be each time. Amen. What is it? It's the hand of God. Amen. See? Before us. And because it's in a little group veiled in human flesh, it's veiled to the outside world. He's hid from the outside world. He's revealing himself to babes such as we'll learn. See? If you ever see every parable in the Bible, every type of the Bible is made manifest right here before us. The same God in the pillar of fire that wrote the Bible, both in the Old and New Testament, is right here manifest. It's showing just exactly what it was. Interpreting it right back. And to make it sure that it's the interpretation, we got the interpretation, then let's see it happen. That's it. That's it made manifest. Manifest. Jesus said, if I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. See? It's got to be proven. But now, now not proven like Jesus, say, put a, a rag around his head and hit him on the head and say, if you're a prophet, tell us who hit you. 
And if you are the Son of God, turn these bread. See, that's the devil. If you're the Son of God, come off that. I mean the revelation that he's supposed to do. That's what it is. But now, as Revelation 10 is revealed, the mysteries of God is made manifest. Known. As the seven sealed book promised. Now, let your faith in him who is the word. Because in Revelation 10, it says, or Revelation 19, rather. I had wrote down here Revelation 10 to go to it, but at 8, 10, it's 19. When he comes, he's going to be called the Word of God. <laughs> Riding upon a white horse. And the followers of heaven will be behind him. Break the denominational veil of education. Break the denominational veil of tradition. Break those veils that's hiding him from you. Break those veils of pride, you women. Your, your king's daughters. Act like it. Live like it. Break every veil. No matter what PhD the LLD said, if it's contrary to that Bible, break to that veil. For we cross the ribbon veil. We're on the other side now. On the other side. And you will see, if you'll just do that, break those old traditions and things and come to Him, you'll see Him stand in the mighty conqueror. The word of promise for this age made manifest. Amen. You'll see the mighty God unveiled. Amen. See Him right among us, sir. Unveiled. The mighty God. Unconquered by traditions. They tried to hide Him behind there. They did for years. Amen. But the time of the promise drew near. Amen. God raised up a Moses one time. And He set the children free from them things. And He still, He can't be conquered. Heavens and earth will pass away, but my word shall not. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. They say it can't be done, but it was done. Then when it was done, they said it's of the devil. But that don't change the word of God a bit. It still remains God to the believer. The mighty conqueror, the same yesterday, today, and forever, by his nature, by his word, Hebrews 13, 8. I'm closing and saying this because it's 5 minutes to 12. Just saying this. I got about... Ten, twelve more pages. I'll get some of time maybe tonight. Notice. Amen. Notice this. There was an auction one time. And they got an old fiddle up. You've heard it many times. An old violin. The auctioneer said, What am I offered for? I may not have this just right according to the poem. It's been many, many years, but it comes on my mind. And they picked up the old fiddle. It didn't look very much. It looked scrummy. Everything. He couldn't even get a bid on it. Finally, I think he got a bid for a dollar or something like that. And it, there was one standing there that didn't think it ought to sell for that, so he went and picked it up. He struck it in his hands, picked up the bow and rosin it, and he played a tune. And when he did, everyone started crying. They never heard such music in their life. Then the auctioneer said, what am I offered? Two thousand, five thousand, ten thousand. See, what was it? The master's hand yeah. revealed what was veiled in the old instrument. <laughs> Same now. The old book. It's ragged. It's been laughed at, burnt, made fun of. But the time has come that they've got a denominational auction. The World Council of Churches. They're selling them like nobody's business. There's a denominational auction coming. But remember, there's something in the old book that promised that there will be a predestinated ordained hand come one day that will pick it up Amen. and make the word of this book to a predestinated heart to the task that it's made for reveal the promises that's in it. Amen. It might look old like an old bunch of holy rollers or something there. But it just takes a master's hand, the word on it, to reveal that word. Amen. And it becomes more than a holy roller. It's become that to every one of us. Hasn't it, friends? Amen. It's not a bunch of fanaticism. This depends on whose hand the bow is in. Amen. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, by faith, today I see the master of the old book that they have swapped for traditions. They swapped it for denominations. They tried to trade it off. Now they're trading it for a, a world council of man, of churches, communistic, atheistic. The auction's own, Lord. God, step forth. Surely you will. 
Send us that prophet, Lord, yes, Lord. that picks up that bow, yes. that picks up this word, and proves that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Many, Lord, will sell their lives. They'll throw away their old traditions. They'll break the veils. They want it, Lord. They'll give anything. Anything. Just give them Jesus. Lord, I think you've proved it to them now. They come from everywhere. They spend their livings. They do everything to try to get to the meetings. To do all they can because they found that pearl of great price. Other things are very little. Bless them, Father. Laying on this pulpit this morning, Lord, lace handkerchiefs. Maybe some of them will have to leave today before the healing service tonight. Oh, eternal God, look down. I know you're here. You're veiled. And I'm sending these little veils, Lord, called handkerchiefs and little aprons and little booties for little babies. And I'm sending them as little veil tokens that your word has been preached over this morning. And as a believer, I lay my hands upon them, my body. It's signifying, and I believe it. And by faith, each one in this building is doing the same, Lord. Yes. May the sick get well. Yes. You can stroke the, the word from here, Lord, like the old violinist did to the violin. Make it so, Lord. Make it play the right tune. Yes. Only the Master's hand. And we'll see him standing in full view. How those people must have thought that day when they wouldn't give nothing. When they didn't give nothing for the old violin. They didn't want it. They wouldn't have it in their house. But when once picked up by the one who could master it, then they sold everything they had to get it. They were fussing and fighting over it. It was too late then. So will it be sometime. When the trumpet of the Lord shall be sounded out, time shall be no more. Those who have been looked at and made fun of that stood there before the open veil and seen the Word of God manifested. Others will scream for it, but as you said, it'll be too late then. They went in to the wedding supper and they were left out where there's weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. Help every person to believe this morning, Father. Break through every veil of selfishness, every veil of unbelief, and see the mighty conquer unveiled before the believers. For, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. A little while, and the world won't see me no more, yet ye shall see me. Show yourself among us, Lord, as you have been doing. Ever remain that way until we are visibly before you. When the the amorphous has been changed, and you become again son of man and son of David, grant it, Lord, through Jesus Christ's name, while we have our heads bowed, and all in prayer. (laughs) wonder today if there's some here that inside or out. There's no way to bring an altar call up here because there's no room. But I wonder sincerely, you believe this to be the truth? You believe that in this day that we're living in all this chaos and scientific age like it was in the days of Noah and the days of Moses, the days of Christ, that God, the great Father of all of us, who are born into Him, stands among us today. Amen. This visible pillar of fire that's scientifically proven. Many years ago, as the little boy spoke to me out there and told me I'd live right here, what would take place. Telling you about it. And then one day down on the river, before the ministry started, first revival, He appeared in the skies, identified Himself, and gave the commission. All these years I've hid it in my heart, veiling Christ. Same pillar of fire interpreting the word as promised. We're in the last days, just the coming of the Lord. And if you find yourself outside that veil, which is death to stay out, will you by faith this morning say, by God's help and with your help, Lord, I want to break through that veil. I want to get in where you're at to see the full word of God. Don't try to be a Moses. Don't try to be an Aaron. Don't just be who you are, but be a Christian. Would you, with your heads bowed, raise your hands to God and say, Lord God, help me inside the veil. God bless you. God bless you. That's just look at that. Outside, remember, I might not never see your hand. It isn't, it isn't worth much for me to see it anyhow. It is God. It only, to me, it just makes me see that the, the seed has fell somewhere. And, but God sees the real heart. If there are any others that didn't raise their hands or want to be raised now, 
Raise your hands and be remembered in prayer. Raise your hands. God bless you. That's good. God bless you. Father, we pray today that these, Lord, who are not yet through that veil, they're standing out there like Israel. They're watching. They believe, but they've never broke into this yet. To see that great Shekinah light, both spiritual and physical, in so much that a mechanical eye of the camera keeps taking the picture. Just two weeks ago, caught it again. You're revealing yourself, Lord, the mighty God, unveiled to the believer, still veiled to the unbeliever, but unveiled to the believer. May they break through today, Lord, see His great splendor and glory. May their hearts be changed before we even get back to this church tonight. May they all be filled with Your Spirit, Your presence. May the Master pick up that faith that they've got. Streak it across the Word. May the tune come back. Thou has been ordained before the foundation of the world to believe this. Believe, my child, and be saved. Father God, we commit them into Your hands now. Realizing there's nothing more that we can do. It's all with You now, Father. I give them to Thee in the name of Jesus Christ, Thy Son. Amen. I love Him. I love Him. Because He first loved me. And purchased my Wonderful, wonderful Jesus is to me, the Counselor, Prince of Peace, mighty God is He, it's saving me, the keeping me from all sin and shame. Wonderful if my Redeemer pray. I once was lost, now I'm found free from condemnation. Jesus gives liberty and a full salvation, saving me, keeping me from all sin and shame. Wonderful is my Redeemer, praise His Oh, wonderful, wonderful Jesus is to me, the Counselor, the Prince of Peace, the mighty God is He, oh, saving me, keeping me from sin and shame, wonderful is my Redeemer, praise. How many sees him standing, the mighty conqueror, the Word made flesh, unveiled before us, the Alpha, the Omega, he that was, which is, and shall come, the root and the offspring of David, was the Son of Man, Son of God, Son of Man, will be Son of David. You believe it with all your heart, unveiling himself in each age, brought to the believer, veiling himself in human flesh from the unbeliever. He's hid behind a veil. May God break every veil and we see Him as He is. Jesus breaks every fetter. Jesus breaks every fetter. Oh, Jesus breaks Jordan in the sweet fields of Eden where the tree of life is blooming there is rest for me Jesus 
Don't you want to cross Jordan now? Any long enough in the wilderness, let's go over to the promises. Jesus Shake hands with one another now, saying, Jesus, pray. from me, sent me to believe his word. Oh, can't you hear the master's violin pull across the bow, across his word? He's the same yesterday. I will ever, ever praise him. I will ever, ever praise him. I, him, the word, What did he do? For he sat behind the curtain. Me. Praise be to God. I love him. Don't you love him? Isn't this heavenly? I like that attributes of the word. See, just the Holy Spirit, that sweet, humble way. I, I just like that. Oh, just saying, on the other Side of Jordan. I'm nearing there now. In the sweet immortal of Eden. What will I find there? Where the tree of life. That was in the Garden of Eden. There is rest for. You want to go? He breaks every fetter. Jesus, break every tradition, every fetter. Jesus, break every fetter. All denominations, all three. No wonder Isaiah said he's a counselor, a prince of peace, a mighty God, the everlasting Father. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Jesus is to me. Counselor, prince of peace, the mighty God is he. Oh, saving me, keeping me from all sin and shame. Wonderful, my redeemer, praise. 
smile that blooms my heart. How wonderful he is. I tell you, there's no end to this. It, I come into this 33 years ago, feeling this away. And if he tarries one day, I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going out in the same way. Amen. Wonderful, wonderful Jesus is to me. He's a counselor, my prince of peace. A mighty God is he. He's saving me. He's keeping me from sin and shame. Wonderful, my redeemer. Paul said, if I sing, I'll sing in the Spirit. If I preach, I'll preach in the Spirit. If I walk, I'll walk in the Spirit. If I talk, I'll talk in the Spirit. Let everything be done by the Word and the Spirit. Yes, sir. Amen. It's all God's truth. I see Him, the mighty God, unveiled. I see Him pull back the creeds, the denominations, pull back the, the skeptics, the educational programs, and everything. Walk forward. Amen. Stand there. You think the creeds could conquer him? You think the denominations could conquer him? You think the World Council can conquer him? He conquered everything, broke every fetter, ripped open hell, tore off the seal. He entered into the holiest of holies, unveiled himself to us being the Word, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. I love him. Now, until we meet this afternoon, we want to do one thing, that is, Take the name of Jesus with you, a child of sorrow and of woe. It will joy and comfort give you. Oh, take it everywhere you go. Precious name. If the Satan tries to tempt you that you're not looking at the right thing, pointing to the Word like Jesus did, see? See? Amen. At the name of Jesus bowing, falling, prostrate at His feet, King of kings in heaven will crown Him when a journey be in about six o'clock giving out prayer cards to those who wants to come in the prayer line. I think we better do it. We wasn't going to, but being a crowd, we better do it, you see. Now, remember him. Keep him always on your mind, in your heart, wherever you go. See, keep Jesus on your mind. Amen. Take the name of Jesus with a listen to as a shield from every snare. What happens when temptations round you get? What must you do? Just breathe that holy name in prayer. Precious name. Precious name. Oh, how sweet. Oh, how sweet. Oh, power and joy of heaven. bow our heads now. I'm going to ask the pastor. He'll come and dismiss the audience. Brother Neville, God bless you. Brother Neville.